This is the Andy Citroen Injury Attorney's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Alabama Power. Week three of the high school football season, and we're about to get deep into region play. The St. Paul Saints will be playing their first region game of the year tonight as they host the Baldwin County Tigers, who are already 1-0 in the region. These two teams have only met one time, and that was last year with St. Paul's getting the win. But this year, they come back down here to St. Paul's to open up the region play here for the Saints. Good evening. I'm Jim Cox. My partners, as always, Dan Brennan and Vic Lockett. And Dan, looking at this matchup here, you see two teams that have some, some of those intangibles but you're saying maybe a little bit different between what uh, you're going to notice from St. Paul's and what you're going to notice from Baldwin County. Yeah, I was talking to Vic about this, that St. Paul's, they've got speed, but they've got a lot of size, sure. right? Yes. And then when you look at uh, Baldwin County, especially outside running back quarterback, for heaven's sakes, they've got speed. They've got some size, but the speed is probably what you're going to notice out of that team. Look at the St. Paul's team defensively. They've been very strong over the years. They're going to have their hands full tonight going up against the talented young quarterback from these Baldwin County Tigers. You know, he had a breakout game. He had some breakout games last year as a freshman, but really had a huge game in their 63-14 to victory over Gulf Shores in Week 2. A.J. Mix, the uh, son of the uh, former Baldwin County and uh, Auburn star, Anthony Mix, He's just got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of size, a lot of speed, and they like him as a quarterback, too. They're trying to develop him as a quarterback, but when you watch him on the football field, you quickly realize there's not a whole lot between the lines that he can't do. <laughs> they put up 63 points last week in their win in region play against Gulf Shores. Now, defensively, we've talked about it. You've seen great defensive teams from St. Paul's in the past, mm -hmm. Dan, and also Vic. And Vic, you, they always seem to have a disruptor up front, and they got one who's going to go play in the SEC. That's right, Daniel Foster Allen. He's a guy that's very explosive. He's still very young, just turned 17, but uh, got offers from Rutgers, LSU, Mississippi State, and Kansas. Uh, coincidentally, he's committed to Auburn. And uh, right now, that's where he's going to go. But good-looking kid, 6'5", 250 pounds, very, very explosive. So look for him to have an impact in his game chasing that quarterback. Yeah. Both teams talked about the importance of this early season region game. No room for error in this 6A region one. And this game could actually have some playoff implications as we look further down the uh, season. We're getting ready to kick this one off here at E.E. E. Delaney Field tonight. The St. Paul Saints taking on the Baldwin County Tigers and our Friday Night Rivals brought to you by Andy Citron Injury Attorneys. St. Paul Saints at home here tonight on UTV 44. Friday Night Rivals playing host to Baldwin County and the Baldwin County Tigers, coached by Daniel McDaniel. And uh, great to see Baldwin County. We got to see him for the first time last year in a long time. And yeah. Coach McDaniel's done a great job of that program. And we went up to Baymanette for the game, and they'll kick off. Frank Lacalzi will kick for the Tigers. Zach Gray, Jordan Ingram back deep. For St. Paul's, Baldwin County 1-0 in the region with the win over Gulf Shores, and this one bounces and bounces down, and the Saints will just cover it around the 20-yard line. Let's go down to the sideline and welcome in Amanda Booz to the broadcast tonight. Good evening, Amanda. Good evening. Hey, guys. It feels good to be here for week three of Friday Night Rivals. Now we're here, of course, the Tigers yeah, against the Saints. I'm super happy to be here, but more importantly, I know a player who else is happy to be here, and that is Reggie Bracey. Now, unfortunately, the last time we've seen Reggie, he hyper his elbow in a game against Spanish Fort, but he's back on the field, recently committed to Iowa, and I'm pretty sure he's going to have his A game on tonight on this field. Jim, back to you. Yeah, he was great in our pregame show. Really yeah, enjoyed he had his A game then, right? Yeah, no question about it. So there's Jay Green. Green rolls out. Come to the near side and gets that one complete out to the 22 yard line. Javante Graves Billups with his seventh catch of the season. There's Steve Mask. Always a pleasure pre game. 82% oh, winning percentage here at St. Paul's. His one liners that are about 91%. Yeah, he doesn't miss many of those. Even for an old guy, as he refers to himself. Yeah. Accusing us of calling him old. Pickup of six on first down for the Saints in green. Jordan Ingram's across the 31. He'll have a Saints first down. Ingram, his 35th carry of the year, had 78 yards rushing last week on 21 carries. So that's a lot of carries. Yeah. Good sized kid. Yep. 
absolutely. Taylor, the big sophomore, 297 pounds. Reiner, Schultz, Maples, and Brady Warden. Just look at the size of that line. Mm. Coach McDaniel, Baldwin County, says it's the biggest line I've ever seen. We've got Brown, also uh, Paso at wide receiver. We'll see Javante Graves Billups in there as well. Ingram in the backfield. Bill Johnson goes in motion. Green out of the backfield to Ingram. Ingram trying to get up the far sidelines, and he does. He turns on some speed around the 40, still on his feet. And he's into Tiger territory up to the 47-yard line. Pickup of 21. Johnson did not necessarily physically win the confrontation, but he was out in front and threw a block that helped spring Ingram right here, right on the corner there. Big play by Johnson and uh, more skill and grit shown by Ingram. Freshman Jamarius Carter with the tackle there for Baldwin County. Right back to Ingram they go. And another hole and he's got another first down all the way to the 29 yard line before the sophomore Devonte Jackson pulls him down but not before he picks up 18. And left side of the line being good to him. You know, you guys talking about how big they are. They also have big, good bloodlines as well. Ingram coming in tonight, 34 carries, just 110 yards. So he hadn't really broken off a lot of big yardage so far, but he's on the move early in this one. They'll stack three to the near side. And Green, the senior quarterback. Again, Ingram on the left side. This time, good penetration. In there is Jatarian Brooks, the junior defensive end. We've got some players returning back on that defensive side to the Tigers, and Brooks comes in to make the stop there. Loss of three on the play. Brooks, Jeremy Moore, the senior. He returns from last year. Newsom, Rico Earl also starter from last year. Woodard, just the sophomore. Jeffrey Johnson in the middle. He had a big game last week against Gulf Shores. Two sacks. Carter, we've already called his name. Crook, Jackson, Grant, and Palmer in the secondary for the Tigers. Low snap. Green picks it up, looks over the middle, and he's got Javante Graves Billups, but he can't hold on to it. A little bit behind him. He tried to stretch back there and pull it in, but just wasn't able to. Green with 200 yards and two touchdowns last week made a great throw in overtime to get the score that led to the eventual win for the Saints. That was a good team they beat, too. Third, Third team out of Montgomery. Yep. 27-26. They had scored on their first possession, and they went for two and didn't get it, so then the Saints able to get the touchdown on the first play, and Grayson Miles kicked the extra point to win it for St. Paul's. Long 12, Green looks far side, and that one's incomplete. And the drive stalls at the 33, and you're kind of in that no man's land here. Be a 50 yard field goal. Green had plenty of time, that good big line gave him some time to survey the field and uh, just couldn't connect with his wide out running that quick out. Will Passo will bring it in as the Saints will go for it here on fourth. And 12. Look at the size on that offensive line. It is kind of stunning. Yeah. Kitty Brown split to the top of the screen. Pass out to the bottom. Green looking to left now. Comes back over the middle looking for Javante Phillips. And he's going to be short of the first down. Got it complete. But he's going to be just short of the 20-yard line, it looks like. And Baldwin County's defense comes up. With the stop, Green gets the completion. But they come up a yard short on fourth and 12. It's yeah. a big stop there from the way that drive started for Baldwin County. Absolutely. And Green had pressure on him that time, and he delivered the football. I guess his receiver ran the route just a bit too short. And give credit to Baldwin County there to make that stop short of the first down. Ball. Nathan McDaniel, six year up at Baldwin County, 28 and 24, playing in that tough region. He's had some hard luck as well with having a good record and not making the playoffs, losing out on a tiebreaker. We see A.J. Meeks throws, and that one's going to be incomplete as he was trying to get that one to Kai McNulty. Just a freshman, 6'2", tall, lanky receiver, Walker Baines. Shea Brassi, Walker, Goyans up front. 
Martavius Crook, 6'1", 170. Target Mims and Taquan Williams on the other side. James Stanley in the backfield. See Jackson, the sophomore, come in as well in second and 10. Mix rolls out, floats it this way. Some contact. And that one was hanging up there. And Harris Sankey looked like he may have had a chance to step in front of that one to get the interception. But it said Tay Mims, the sophomore, comes up with a catch with the only gain two. And third and long coming up here for the Tigers. Mims part of that 4 by 100 team, that, uh, that group that won the state championship. Allen, the big highlighted manacle up front, along with Coleman, Bellamy, Hensley, Nunn. Sankey and Little, Bracey, McFadden, and Gray. Very talented secondary. For St. Paul's third and eight. Mix wants to air it out on the right side. Looking for the receiver down far. And he had Martavius Crook go and had a step on him, but just overthrew him. You can see the speed on Crook over there on the far side. And, and the arm on Mix. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, That's that was. Stood out to me. Ooh, and man. If you got somebody that can run under that. Gonna have some touchdowns. Yeah, I I'm with you. I mean, you, you got to take some shots with this speed on the outside and that, that kid's arm. I mean, through the course of this game, that won't be the last time they go long. Sure, yeah, they can strike anywhere on the field with that kind of firepower. Zach Gray back to return the punt as Hunter Odom on to kick Baldwin County. Good kick, really high. Chases Gray, who lets it go over his head. Wow, what a great bounce. For Baldwin County, this one going to get down to the 16-yard line. Great boot by Hunter Odom. I think it surprised Ray. And Hunter, special team player at the moment now. 41-yard punt. Theodore and Foley, Davidson and Baker in seven tonight, along with Murphy and Fairhope, Mary G and Bryant, BC Rain and Blunt, Sarah Land and Daphne. The big matchup up I-65 tonight. Robertsdale and Gulf Shores. Green County and Citronel, Faith Academy at home tonight. Jackson and Satsuma, we'll see Jackson in a couple weeks. Wilcox Central and Viger, Scambia County at home. Andalusia and UMS, big 4A game right down the road. Clark County and Williamson also get after things tonight. Ingram stood up. Again, Carter, the freshman line, back in there. Able to make the stop. Some big games. Big Daphne Saraland game going on tonight up at Saraland. Region game. There's Ingram. Senior on this team. It just would make sense that this offense is going to be productive with a senior quarterback, that running back, and that huge offensive line. They spread the field here. Green looking near side the whole time. He wants to come to Kenny Brown. It's incomplete. Good coverage. Over there by Keon Palmer. It's a nice throw too, Vic. Yeah, it was. They tried to ISO this kid over here by himself. Had the trips to the top of the yep. field and over on the wide side, but then to the, went back to the short side of the field, thinking the safety's going to get all that attention going to the trips. They, they got the coverage they wanted. Yeah, what they wanted, just couldn't connect. Kenny Brown with three catches so far on the year, and now third and ten. For St. Paul's, this were seven minutes Remaining on the clock here in the opening quarter, E.E. E. Delaney Stadium. Green rolling out to his left. Pressure now steps up in the pocket, gets away from the first defender, but not the second as he's going to be wrapped up and brought down. Josh McWilliams, the senior, 5'10", 230, able to get Green around the waist. And Baldwin County's defense comes up with a three and out. Impressive stop here on this drop. Yeah, St. Paul's, you know, if you notice, they had big wide splits with that line, but it didn't free, fool the ball in defense. You know, they just didn't line up as they thought they would out there wide. They just came into the gaps and put pressure on him and got him down. Yeah, Will Passo will now stand in his end zone to punt. Martavius Crook back deep. End over end kick. And Cook just kills for the fair catch of the 40. And so Baldwin County flips the field with that good three and out defensive stand. The rest of our schedule is tonight. Hillcrest Evergreen at home against WS Neal. TR Miller and XL. Flemington at home tonight. This is Mobile Christian going up against Bayside Academy. Uh, Academy. St. Michael on the road at Thomasville. Cottage Hill Christian against JU Blackshire and Choctaw County taking on Chickasaw. RC Hatch and Leroy tonight. Southern Choctaw. And Washington County, Fruitdale, and McIntosh, and Alberta, Sweetwater, Marengo also home tonight. And we'll 
Take a timeout here. 621 to go in the opening quarter. Scoreless 6A Region 1 matchup between Baldwin County and St. Paul's here on Andy Citrin's Friday Night Rivals. Halfway through the opening quarter here at E.D. E. Delaney Stadium, Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett, Amanda Booz in the sideline, Jared Kihas in the truck, and his amazing crew, our statistician David Sharp with us here as we're scoreless to open this one up. Mix on the keeper, breaks one tackle at the 45, and he'll get pushed out of bounds after a couple good penetration. In there by the Saints, Trey Nunn on that one, the junior linebacker. Well, this kid turns the corner. He's not going to be any fun for a cornerback. <laughs> Mix has got that speed, but look at the size, too. Yep. Beautiful looking athlete, right? 6'10, 210, 5 and 2 as a starter. Took over last year. We saw him come into the game yep. that we did. James Stanley. In the backfield along with Drain Coleman, and this will be the Coleman. The sophomore. Picks up a couple third down coming up for the Tigers. Robert Ledoux in there on the tackle for St. Paul's. Third and six. They'll keep both Coleman and Stanley in the backfield for Mix. Mix dumps it out of the backfield. Nice one-handed grab there by Stanley, but he's going to get... Just the line of scrimmage, maybe one more before he's wrapped up and brought down on the play is Reggie Bracey in there to make the tackle. Bracey, again, the Iowa commit. Hurt his elbow last year and wasn't able to finish out the season, but boy, he's a difference maker when he's on the field. Look at that. Hit up there. Taking so, on the block, getting rid of the block. That's yeah. what they're going to love up there at Iowa. Yeah, yeah. Great young guy, too, we got a chance to visit with in the pregame. They're going to go for it here on fourth and six. Just inside the 40. Mix on the right side. He's going to get the first down. Spins free and lunges down to the 29-yard line. Like I said, no fun once he crosses the line of scrimmage, Vic. <laughs> yeah, he's got good feet to be doing two periods in one play. Take a look right here. There's one spin move. There's another. Just fight, doing all he can to fight and pick up that first down. Eddie Trey. Lacy times two. <laughs> Trey Nunn. Finally pulled him down. Mix ran for a touchdown last year. Was 10 of 11 through the air for 207 yards and two touchdowns against Gulf Shores. And they commit there on, convert on fourth down. They'll pitch it back off to Stanley. Stanley, nice little move. Stays on his feet. He's down to the 25-yard line. Vic, you can see offensively, they, they're very, very much multiple. I mean, they, they give you a lot of different wrinkles and a lot of... Uh, Looks you know, borrowed at a different offensive philosophy. Yeah, different formations, but you know what's key here is that uh St. Paul's is reading their keys and just lining up and playing football. Like you saw on the previous play with Bracey, you know, you're getting off blocks to make a play, so that's gonna counter all of that uh, mental stuff that they're trying to put on them. Gonna get a timeout. I think yeah. Baldwin County wanted to take yeah. one. Coach McDaniel takes time out here on second and six and St. Paul's student section below us here. They're having fun. It's not hot out there to them, Jim. It's a warm one here today. <laughs> not to mention all the hot air being screwed in this booth. We're at 6A Region 1. We talked about St. Paul's playing their first region game here in week three. And Blunt 2 0 in the region. Sarahland 2 0. They go up against Daphne again tonight. Baldwin County 1 and 1. I should say Blunt Sarahland 1 0 in region play as a Spanish Fort. Then you see St. Paul's hasn't played yet. And then you see Rain Gulf Shores, Daphne, and Robertsdale all yet to get a win. Technically. Here in the region, yeah. Second. We'll call it five out of the timeout for. Mix and crew. Stanley takes the give on the right side. Good penetration, but he'll fall forward for a couple. A nice job by Treyon Bellamy just crashing down in there to make that tackle. Foster Allen also there as well to help out. 
We're going to have tough sledding going towards Foster Allen, as I pointed out at the top of the broadcast. Auburn commit. Just a, still a puppy age-wise, but a senior on the football field. Also, Vic Lockett saying the word Auburn twice in one broadcast for the first time ever that we've worked with it. <laughs> I knew you were going to make note of that, Jim. Third and three. Mix. Quick slam on the far side. He's got it complete. And a first down inside the 10. First and goal. Tigers as Martravius Crook able to pick that one up for 18 in the quick slant and the nice throw for Mix. Yeah, well, we in little in there. I think that might go for a touchdown. Yep. You saw what he can do when he runs the ball, and there's a there's a great execution of the slant and a big one too because it got that first down. So Crook with the reception, and it's first and goal for the Tigers trying to take advantage of flipping the field position after their three and oh or three and out in the great punt. Previous hits to Coleman. Coleman is wrapped up there by Bellamy. Yeah, I think we got an injured Ooh, man. Yeah, when you see somebody, that's J.W. Jackson, the sophomore out there, and kind of saw his teammates motioning over for a trainer to come come on the field quickly. Yeah, that's not what we come out to on Friday night to see. We like to see the kids compete, stay healthy, and have a good good game in between the lines. Mix was also a guest in our pregame show and. He was talking about some of the weapons he has on this team. And just a sophomore. Great sportsmanship by both teams taking a knee while the injury's being taken a look at. And let's pray that this is not anything serious. Yeah, that's Brian Metz, the trainer. Yeah, that just. Yeah, that just. It's not a good indication when they're waving their hands. Let's see what happens here if you. Oh boy! Right there, that rolled up. Rolled up from behind. Uh, that can definitely happen out there. That the player coming in behind you, you're not expecting it. You're not tensed up, and you can get an injury. All right, so let's see. Ten to Jackson. We'll take a timeout here. Scoreless, St. Paul. See both Coach McDaniel and Coach Mask over there. Brian Metz, the athletic trainer for Baldwin County High School, down there as they tend to J.W. Jackson and um, they've called the ambulance over and uh, lower lower body injury for that young man. So he's getting great medical attention right now, and uh, they'll get him transported and hopefully taken care of as quickly as uh, possible. And it, it is a lower body injury. If that's the only good news, that it not something. So that first replay you saw, he got hit from behind unexpectedly, just rolled up on. So while they continue to tend to the sophomore J.W. Jackson there, we'll take another timeout here at St. Paul's. And thankfully, we don't see very much of this um, High school games and uh, again J.W. Jackson sophomore there getting him taken care of and just uh, it's like a lower leg that some great hands there with Brian Metz to get him stabilizing to see he's just rolled up on from from behind and just the, the worst part of uh, when you have no idea it's coming can't protect yep, yourself you're not tensed up you're yep. not expecting it and uh, you know it's just one of those things that can happen in football as far as a very very serious sport a lot of training goes into it a lot of precautions are taken just like you see the people here to assist so prayers need to be going up for that young man right now yeah you, you know with the helmets on and pads on, you forget these are just young kids we're yeah. out there looking at it and a scary time for that young man just a sophomore but he's in great care here and doctors on staff and trainers and medical professionals there to make sure he uh, gets the best care and hopefully he's on his way to a speedy speedy recovery so uh tell you about some other scores going on uh, right now fairhope leading uh murphy 10-0 that one over in fairhope 7a matchup also in 7a mary g and alma bryant 7-7 Theodore leads Foley 20 to zero in the first quarter. Robertsdale 7-0 over Gulf Shores. Saraland up early on Daphne 21 to nothing.
Baker leads Davidson 13-0 in the first quarter. Ba Baker playing the first home game of the year tonight. Clark County and Williamson scoreless in the first. No report yet from Biger and Wilcox Central as well. And let's wrap up what we've had reported to us so far here. Scoreless in this one, but all one county on the drive here, and now you gotta gotta kind of collect yourself and uh, get your head back uh, focused on the yep. on the next play. But you just saw your teammate, your friend, and your classmate just get parted off there. Never a never a great feeling. Yeah, these things happen, but uh, certainly you know you gotta get your focus and get back at the task at hand. And uh, certainly these kids will do that. These coaches probably being real about it. Put the ball right at the five. Second and goal for the Tigers. AJ makes the sophomore. Wants to keep it himself, right side. Brought down with a high tackle, and he'll get two down to the three-yard line as Daniel Foster Allen got him up high and pulled him down in third and goal coming up here for the Tigers. Yeah, St. Paul's ran that uh, inside slant. Both ends crashing down hard. The defensive tackle's crashing down hard. He's trying to secure that middle and this allow him to get into that end zone, and they did it. Stanley in the backfield with Mix. Mix looking another quick one on the far side. He's got it for the touchdown. Yeah, Martavius Crook real quick. had the slant that set him up at first and goal, and now he's got the touchdown as well. An impressive drive by the Baldwin County Tigers, capped off by the touchdown pass from Mix to Crook. Yeah, Crook just used that big body, showed him the two, so he'd have an easy target. And it almost uh, looked like they caught St. Paul's not quite ready to go because it looks like the defensive line didn't jump off. But nevertheless, uh, Baldwin County capitalizes on the punter started it. Yep. That's right. Kind of a mis misplay on the uh, punt. Mm -hmm. like the Kelsey for the PAT, and Baldwin County has the lead 7-0. An impressive start here in quarter number one for the Tigers, both defensively and offensively on that drive. Well, what's interesting, though, when you really break down who had the impressive start, it was St. Paul's right out of the gate. Yep. Gashing holes and mm -hmm. with big runs, and, and Green looked good at quarterback, and they went down the field and then stalled out around the 30-yard line. Yep. And uh, since then, their second drive really was not a drive at all. There's a great run by mix that was the fourth down yeah uh, conversion there I believe and then the slant there to crook that got him at first and goal and then there's the touchdown yeah, coach McDaniel said if you're gonna give us that slant with our quarterback and that receiver we'll take it and yep. we'll take it all the way down the field and score ten plays on that drive just 41 yards and four and a half off the clock and on the kick on the far side Zach Gray Gray across the 30. The ball came loose. Baldwin County has it. We'll see if the officials say he was down, but that ball came loose, and the Tigers yeah, ended up excited. with it. They have it. You can clearly see. And we'll see if the officials say he was down or not. Take on Williams has the football. And a turnover. Sudden change. And Baldwin County is back in business. Well, let's say this is easy. Baldwin County is winning the special team side of the no game. No doubt right about now. that. <laughs> the great punt. Yes. Right now. They forced the turnover. But well, Gray's explosive, and and he's he's hitting a seam right here, but he gets upended. Ball well, came out as he hit the ground. And yeah, I guess in the NFL, elbow would have been down, but uh, certainly these officials not privy to replay. Of course, the stands are if they're taking our feet here on the jumbo tron. <laughs> and at the they don't 30, have a vote. Tigers on top, pressure coming. Mix floats that one out. It's just a little too high for Stanley. Trying to set up the screen there, but those big, tall linemen like uh, Daniel Allen in his face. Yeah, 6'5", waving his arm. Yeah. yeah, that makes it hard. I guess when Daniel sticks his arms up, what is he, about eight feet then? <laughs> it's like Yao Ming. It's like trying to throw over the goalpost. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, they, they, they brought a lot of heat on that one. And just keep an eye on the St. Paul's defense and see if they begin to bring more pressures little and crook matched up at the top of the screen then you see the sophomore mix gives it off to stanley puts his head down and he lumbers 
down to the 24-yard line as he got past Hensley there and able to pick up a handful on second down. Yeah, by putting his hand on the ground, he's got that handful. So that was great, great balance out of that young man right there. Third and five. Here for the Tigers. Mix looking. Dumps it out of the backfield and that one complete on the far side. Another first down still all the way down the sideline. Touchdown, Baldwin County. Taquan Williams, 26 yards and Baldwin County with back-to-back -back touchdowns has spread their lead to 13 with a PAT yeah, coming. More of that speed on the outside, but how did it get so wide open, Vic Lockett? Yeah, you can tell that was a definitely blown in coverage there. He went with that uh, twins over there and they just kind of lost him. Just turned right there. Out. He, like, he just ran a quick out, didn't he, Jim? Yeah, and wide open. Nice little touch pass from Mix. Yeah, and he had, he had too much speed for the safety. McFadden coming over. You thought you thought he had an angle, but again, that speed by Baldwin County paying off again. Kowsey makes it 14-0 as Baldwin County with quick scores back to back here. And they have I think stunned the home crowd with less than a minute to go here in the opening quarter. Well, Baldwin County coming over here to play. This is, you know, what I would call a pretty hostile environment to come over here and stun this crowd and stun this team like this. Pretty shocking. Friday Night Rivals brought to you by Andy Citroen Injury Attorneys. Thanks to Andy and all of his great crew for being a part of high school football again with us every Friday night here on UTV 44. Thanks a lot to put these broadcasts together and thanks for Andy for again being a big part of it here. Not all, a lot of history between these two schools, Jim. Second time ever played, last yeah. year the first. And Had a lot to do with the AHSAA and their decision to lift St. Paul's into 6A. Yep, competitive balance rule. And Baldwin County going to be offside here on the kickoff. Well, they're all jacked up because <laughs> of those two quick scores. Yep, Mason Kelly, the kicker, and they'll... And I think they were actually trying to create another turnover. A little pooch kick to yeah, the far side. pooch kick into that little dead zone, and they were anxious to get down there and cover the football, but the referee blows it dead and say, hey, you're off size. A little too, too fast, Tigers. And I think that they're a little concerned with the return talent of St. Paul's, too. I don't think they want any part of those guys back there deep. Yeah, Gray and Ingram. Yeah. Graves Billups back there as well. And Coach McDaniel's seen the tape, so... I bet he put this in this week. He's no dummy. Kick it over to the far side and stood up and brought down as Taiwan Abel. Good work on the coverage there. Jamarius Carter, the linebacker, able to make the stop. More of our great partners here on high school football on Friday nights. Alabama Power. Without them, the lights of St. Paul's wouldn't be on here tonight. So, or the air condition, more important. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sit in the dark. They Ooh. would like the air condition to be running even more. They like that meter to be spinning, right? <laughs> so, thanks to Alabama Power for being with us this year as well. So now, Baldwin County offense hadn't been on the field for a while, and Ingram to the 41-yard line, pulled down by a handful of jersey. There is. Yeah, I bet Max said, let's get back down to basics and slow this football game down. This Wait. first quarter, let's get back to what the game plan was. Yep. Uh, Run the football behind that big line. That man. big line, and, and uh, between the line and, and Ingram, it makes a whole lot of sense to pitch it and see what he can do. Another injured player over on the far side. And one of the Baldwin County players. Let's pray this one isn't as serious. Maybe the wind knocked out him or something. All right, let's go down to uh, Amanda and see if she's got an update for us on J.W. Jackson as we saw him leaving the field just a few moments ago. Amanda. Hey, guys. Yes, unfortunately, we just seen Jackson down, number 17. He's the tight end, of course, for the Tigers. And unfortunately, they're saying it's a broken tibula and fibula. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's heading to the hospital to get proper x-rays. We're hoping for the best and that he gets well safe. He also is a sophomore and plays on the baseball team. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that that's not going to be an injury he has to worry about. Mm -hmm. Jim, back uh, to you. Thanks, Amanda. Good work getting that up. Unfortunate information on the young man is Green 
comes out here. Javante Graves Billups makes a nice move at the 45, and he's up to the 49-yard line. He's going to have a first down. That'll probably bring the... Well, Jay Green sent that ball out there on a rope. <laughs> I mean, that was quickly out there to him for him to give the opportunity to make the moves he did. St. Paul's the first down. They had 23 first downs in the game last week. Well, that made up for the effort against UMS right when they couldn't move it much at all. No, so that'll bring the first quarter to a close. 6A Region 1 matchup. St. Paul's hasn't lost a region opener since 2007. But right now they trail Baldwin County 14-0, who's looking to stay perfect in the region here in this early season on Friday Night Rivals, brought to you by Andy Citron Injury Attorneys. Ready to start the second here on Andy Citron's Friday Night Rivals. We're at E. Delaney Stadium in Mobile. St. Paul's taking on Baldwin County. 6A Region 1 matchup and Baldwin County on top by two scores as Ingram with the pitch to start the second quarter. will pick up maybe two just across midfield there. First half, St. Paul's took the opening drive and running it behind Ingram. They were on the move, then it kind of stalled out, and then a great punt pinned the Saints back deep, and then Baldwin County able to score a quick touchdown. And then they took advantage of the ensuing kickoff fumble, recovered that, and another touchdown. And A.J. Mix, the sophomore, has the Tigers on top, 14-0. Here in the second, and senior quarterback Jay Green for the Saints looking to bring his team back, fires that one, contact and caught. As they're able to get to Bill Johnson, bang, play there is Tayshawn Grant, the senior safety, came over and put the hit on, but Johnson comes up with his seventh reception of the season, had four catches for 91 yards last week. And yeah, nice job to catch that thing with Simon Taylor's contact with the ball arriving and Tayshawn as well. But Johnson's, he's a pretty good athlete. Yep. Well, he showed it right there. Senior had it up to the 37 for the Saints. You see Ingram in the backfield. Abel lines up in front of him. And they'll give it to Abel this time. And Abel, the sophomore, falls ahead to the 35. Yeah, a little belly play. Give the fullback uh, a couple of chips there since yeah. he's uh, been blocking all night. Give him huh? some groceries, yeah, right? Yeah. Coach Mask was talking about that young man on the field before the game. Said he's going to be a good, good back for us down the road, just a sophomore. Give him a little bone there. Second and eight. Here for the Saints, they're one and one on the year. Lost to St. Paul's and week, uh, lost to UMS in week one. Beat a good park crossing team in overtime. Rolling out green, pressure coming, dumps it off. Able to get that one off to Banks Griffin, the junior. And he's going to be close to the first down. What a hit. Nice job by Griffin running that route, coming all the way across the field there from that little wing spot. I thought uh, Green looked good, too. He had pressure, and he still delivered on the run with a rope. Mm -hmm. Well done by Green. Picks up seven. Third in the yard. Doing a heavy run set formation here. Everybody all tight except for single wide out. Give it off to Ingram on the left side, and he's going to have the first down. Straight ahead, downhill football. Yeah, and that means you got to go right by or over or around Jeremy Moore, the defensive tackle there, who's got offers from the likes of Missouri and Georgia Tech. Number 91, he's a big guy, goes around 300 pounds. First down for the Saints. Ingram there and 91. Jeremy Moore that Dan was just talking about. Jeffrey Johnson, the linebacker behind him. 10 tackles last week against Gulf Shores in the Baldwin County win. Green looking for the corner, wants Johnson, and he overthrows him. Good coverage down there as well as Palmer was there with Johnson. It's man-on-man -man football right there. and Just saying, my guy's going to be better than yours. The quarterback's got to give him the opportunity at the play. Keep it in bounds. This Baldwin County team lost 19-7. Week one, playing upper class against Murphy in a non-region matchup. Murphy much improved this year. And they got the win against 
Gulf Shores last week as they open up region play. Second and 10, Green pulls this one down. Now scrambles right up the middle, still on his feet. He's inside the 15. He was a shoestring away from scoring that one. Yeah. Showed good quickness squeezing through there. Got in the clear there, and just someone from Baldwin County just stuck the paw out there just to save a touchdown. Steve Mask just says this kid, leadership-wise and tangible-wise, is just off the charts. He just goes on and on about Jay Green. Well, there's a flag on it, so it looks like he's all for naught. Yeah. Personal foul? Holding. Holding, okay. So all the way back to the 34. First flag we've had in the game here tonight. You know, Jim, you mentioned wonky last week. You know what naught is? Zero. <laughs> That's a southern term versus the wonky being a northern term. <laughs> Vocabulary breaking out here tonight. St. Paul's fires over the middle, and Graves Billups able to hold on to that one. It's like that same play replicated from down at the other end. Same situation. This time he holds on to it, reaching back, pulling it in. Real athletic play by Billups right there. Yep. Pull that thing in over his head behind him. And knowing he's crossing the middle of the Correct. field yeah, and, and yes. the traffic lie ahead. And mm -hmm. Grant, he likes to hit at that safety position. Yeah. We've seen that early tonight here. Yeah, several times. So they pick up 13. So third and... Long seven, we'll officially call it eight here for the Saints. Green looking to his right, having to scramble out. Pressure, fires able to get it complete down to the 15 yard line and Johnson's got that one. And that's gonna be good for a St. Paul's first down. Wow, good decision, a good rollout there by Green and a good throw going against his body All there. All good by Green on that one, Jim, yep. you're right. I mean, he kept his eyes downfield. Yeah, I'm getting rushed, but I just slide and slide. Here's my receiver, he's open. I put it on his numbers. He did. They convert the first down. Johnson's having a good game. He's been off to a good season. You're right. He's just one of those good high school football players yeah. that you've seen. Good athlete, as you said, 6'5", about 170 pounds. Played a lot for the St. Paul's team last year. Jacob Evans comes in. That fullback position in front of Ingram who takes the give and he's got a hole on the left side breaks a tackle Jordan Ingram in for the touchdown St. Paul's I tell you what uh, you know I've been talking with Schultz a little bit but right there his son really showed up there he snapped that football and turned his guy so he could get that hole and it was there it doesn't take much for Ingram either yeah, I'm telling you nice job by Schultz you block for this guy a little bit yep you're gonna have some success right? I think so he shows turn yeah. his guy there 68 just creates a big lane there I know his dad, Roger Schultz, he likes to talk a lot, but he'll be talking about that one there probably for a few whoa, whoa, whoa. years. Roger Schultz likes to talk? <laughs> Miles on for the PAT. Jacob Evans did a good job blocking on that one as well. And St. Paul's cuts into the Baldwin County lead here with 7.17 to go in the first half. You were talking a little bit in the pregame show. If you want to reach out to us, send us an email at heyguys at utv44.com. Thanks to our folks at Crane Works. We'll try our best to answer questions here. We'll talk about Baldwin County and what they have in the next five weeks. Tonight here at St. Paul's, and they go Sarah Land, Blunt. Then they're open, then Daphne and Spanish Sports. Well, that's five in a row. The, the, boy, the meat of the 6A SEC-like schedule they're yeah, running through so here. It's like, where are you going to get the wins? Now, you, you know, they're a pretty good team, yep. so it's uh, they, they got a shot most of these games, but this is why this game is so important, Jim. Yeah, and they're just all lumped up there together, even with that open date, but you see Sarah Land, Blunt, Daphne, and Spanish Ford. Then you got Robertsdale, B.C. Rain, and a non-region game against Charles Henderson to wrap it up, but that's why... Coach McDaniel was talking about, you know, you don't want to get behind in this region and, you know, it quickly becomes a tough hole to dig out of. As Miles with a good kick. Goes all the way back to the one, and Mims stood up and stopped there across the 20. There's some hidden going on even on the special team. I noticed, there. yeah. Saw that. <laughs> Gang tackling. I thought one thing that was really cool, Dan, you talked about these teams only playing each other one time. But how, how much of a mentor Steve Mask is to Coach McDaniel at Baldwin County, a young coach, and, and you know, he just says unabashedly, he's like, he's one of the rising stars in the coaching ranks here in Alabama and uh, really, really likes him. And 
Coach McDaniel, what he feels for Coach Mass. Yeah, it's, it's really nice to watch. Hey, Coach Mass is a mentor for me. I'm in the booth. Mix. Gets this one out. On the far side. And Mims with his first catch tonight. And pushed out of bounds. And gain of 12. So that'll be good for first down. Sonovas beating the Gulf Coast and Friday Night Rival Schools work to drive out hunger. Schools compete each week to collect the most peanut butter and jelly. Winning school gets 250 bucks from Sonovas, and then at the end of the year, somebody's going to get $1,250 from Sonovas. Thanks for partnering up with Feeding the Gulf Coast and trying to take a bite out of childhood hunger. And well, some exciting news about that at halftime. Quite the battle this week between these two schools, much like the game on the field here for who is going to bring more PB and J and pressure. Comes in this time, and Mills Hensley able to get the sack on Mix. With the breakdown there, Mix didn't really have many options, and Hensley comes in. And yeah, it blows up there with 26. I mean, he stops everything in his tracks right there and just creates a pile. And that, that, that play was dead from the start of both. I talked about watching for uh, St. Paul's to start bringing more pressure and, and yep. different looks, and they've done that. That was Matt Russell, who was the first one in there to help blow that one up. Second and 14 now. Mix going to pull it down on the left side and trying to get to the sidelines. They were pushed out of bounds. About the 38-yard line, so third and long coming up. Yeah, Nix wanted to hit that crossing route, but I got to credit Trey Nunn there. He noticed it coming behind him, the linebacker, mm -hmm. and then it just twitches his hips and takes that away from him. Great play by Trey Nunn there. <laughs> Good concession by Nix, too. Mm -hmm. By Mix, I should say. We'll take a timeout here. Heat timeout halfway through the second quarter. Baldwin County on top, 14-7. They got a third and long coming up after this timeout. St. Paul's Saints cheerleaders cheering on their Saints defense here as our Metal Roofing Center and Supply raised the roof cam. They got some spirit. Third and seven here for the Baldwin County Tigers up by a score. Mix rolling out, steps up. He's going to be blindsided, and Daniel Foster Allen wow. brings him down with a thud, you heard. Yes. I'll tell hey. you what, that young man there, he's going to go far if he's going to play like that. Good coverage downfield as well as Mix wanted to go down the middle of the field as receivers covered and Foster kept battling during that play and Mix stepped up in the pocket and then ultimately paid the price. Well, it's like who, who on this team could possibly do this wow. to Mix? Well, right. he's the, that's the guy. That's the guy right there. Yeah. I'm talking wow. to his mother this week, Dana. She calls him her baby. And, you know, I just think, look at Dana and say, I'd really like to see you carry that guy around <laughs> as a baby. <laughs> Not a carriage you can fit in. Nope. Odom with another good punt and... Graves Billups fair catches that one back at the 26 yard line time for our trivia question kind of simple all-time winningest coach at Baldwin County High School they've been playing football a long time up there had a lot of coaches and that one I don't even have a teaser on <laughs> if it comes to you we'll see if you're right in the second half Vic Lockett all righty St. Paul's comes back here on offense with nine ticks and five minutes to go in the first half. Ingram, nowhere to go on that right side. Good work by Jeremy Moore, who Dan just talked about. Came in to make the stop there. Ingram, you know, it's 6'2", runs real upright, oh, yeah. real, real tall. Yeah, kind of hard when you're 6'2", to get down low with some of these kids in high school. So, yeah, he's probably going to look upright in most of his runs. No but he up. doesn't need to get low with that line in front of him. <laughs> They're creating pass for him. Hard for them to get low, too. Exactly. No gain on first down as the Tiger defense came up with a stop. And now St. Paul's is going to take a timeout. Here they will. Didn't like how that play was shaping up. So Jay Green will come over and... Under five minutes left in the half, Coach Matt says, you know, hey, we can't use these timeouts at the halftime, so might as well make sure we're all on the same page. You talked a little bit about Jay Green. Coach Mask was talking about us, how when he got over here to St. Paul's, how he really, really was quickly embraced by his teammates and really did a lot of work on his side to make sure he got to know all of his teammates and really became 
quickly one of the leaders of the Saints Hall team. Yeah, a year ago in January, uh, he transferred from UMS Wright, and uh, you're right, he had a lot of ingratiating to do, yep. which uh, evidently he did it. So on the timeout here, we'll tell you about more of our friends on Friday Night Rivals. Greers since 1950. They're going to like seeing Daniel Allen Foster, aren't they, Big Pocket? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Fred Robert. He loves to pull for red, white, and orange and blue. There's also, Crane Works. Thanks for being a part of high school football and our Friday Night Rivals this year as we're back at it here on second and ten. Jay Green out of the timeout. Looks over the middle of the field for Johnson, and he's got him, and Johnson's going to have a first down before he's wrapped up by Tayshawn Grant of the Tigers. And nice job by Johnson to get his hips spinning around to catch that ball behind him. It was a fastball again from Green, and certainly made the adjustment to make the catch. Good look at Ivan Schultz, the big center that the clock was talking about. Good bloodlines, Roger Schultz, uh, kid. Everybody knows his voice. His dad's voice. Green back to Johnson with a lot of green in front of Johnson, and Johnson across midfield to the 48-yard line. Grant. Got him around the shoestring, but he picks up 14. And he dies for the last four. Yeah, wow, wide open. Once he made the catch here, so much space in front of Green. Well, he jumps about four yards to tack on to. Yep. Jumping a heck of a game, Jim. He really is. Had a big game last week. You can tell a little safety blanket there between Green and Bill Johnson as well. You can just see a lot of trust factor there. When I agree. Green's Always good to have an outlet. Sam Spear will replace him on this play, and they'll pitch it to the far side with Ingram trying to turn the corner. Pressure coming. Ingram will get knocked out of bounds. Rico Earl, good job there for the Tigers to get in and disrupt that one. Yeah, that's a free safety, filling the alley, not allowing them to get that corner and get to go in the field. Update from just down Old Shell Road from our friend Willis Wilcox. UMS leads Andalusia 7-0 at the half. Andalusia, much improved team in 4A. And of course, UMS with the longest winning streak in the state right now. He hey, didn't play. One of my old teammates. Yep. Short guy. Out of Shaw. Big shoulders. <laughs> of course, UMS didn't play last week. Their game got canceled because of the pending hurricane. Johnson in motion. Come out of the backfield. Ingram bobbles it, but he's able to grab it. Those long strides inside the 40 to the 35 and another St. Paul's first down. I'll tell you what, Green might have put just a hair too much mustard on that, but good job by Jordan Ingram just to collect that thing and get it up field. Picks up 13 and Jeffrey Johnson, the senior linebacker for the Tigers, able to bring him down with a little help from the safety grant. You know, Ingram also can play a little outside linebacker and I think uh, Coach Mash prefers when he's just on offense only that he can really concentrate mm -hmm. on that side of the ball. This is what you get. Now inside three minutes. In the first half, they go right back to Ingram on the left side with another big hole. He's to the 26. They'll pick up nine on first down. Rarely do we see that power eye run like that, but uh, our good friend Coach Mass, you know, that old dog ain't gonna change too much. <laughs> Darius Woodard, the sophomore. Dotting the eye. You know, exactly. you get the tailback dotting the eye, which Everybody, you know, ran that for a long stretch. Made famous by your Georgia Bulldogs. Yep. Thanks, Griffin comes in, blocking ahead. Now as Abel comes in at tailback, and he'll take the give on the left side. Taewon Abel. He's got the first down and more as he's knocked out of bounds around the 16-yard line. Offensive line just cleared out the left side, Big Lockett. Yeah, this kid, Lucas Taylor, you guys have been talking about. He's showing me his stuff. I mean, he's just a puppy, but he is giving some room to these backs. You know, he crashes it down, and then they fold behind it, and they're not finding anybody to block until they're five yards down the field. Now, Coach McDaniel will take a timeout on the other side as you kind of feel this St. Paul's drive gaining some momentum here and just doing what they 
do is sit right behind that big left side. Yeah, he wants to get him over there and say, look, let's make a stand, get in halftime, see if we can stop them right here. Let's figure out what they're doing, and we'll come back out in the second half and stop them again. Let me get my timeouts in that time. So St. Balls has come up. See, they started with a loss to UMS and then they went out last week in overtime against a good park crossing team. They were down three times in that game, rallied back to get the win in overtime. Tonight against the Baldwin County Tigers and they're home next week against Blunt when they go to Gulf Shores. Then they're off. And then they got a daring little four week stretch there as they Spanish Fort at Sarah Land. They got BC Rain, then they go back on the road to take on Daphne before closing things out at Robertsdale. Very top heavy 6A Region 1 again this year. And it is daring. First down for the Saints. Ingram back in, steps out of bounds. Just outside the 10. That's my boy, Coach Mass. We'll run this thing until you stop it. And we'll go the same way, same play until you stop it. They've got the pieces. Taylor and Reiner over that left side, and Schultz at center. You see Taylor that the clock it was just talking about 77, 6'4, just three pounds under 300. Just a sophomore. That draws some attention. Those, those set size. Second and three. Again to the left side. Again, it's Ingram. And again, it's a Saints touchdown. Any change uh, in the play there? Well, they pitched it this time. Yeah, they pitched the left it. Side. And, and really, they, they another more great blocking. They just kind of the angle took them. They moved everybody out to the left. And a uh, good running back like Ingram's going to see that hole and cut it back and almost untouched. Even with the ball on the near hash, shortens the field to that side and yep. didn't didn't matter at all. Nope. Well, those guys really started feeling it here, yeah, this even, particular drive. Even the tight end got in on the action. Saw that. Landon Rawlins just pancaking this guy into the end zone. Miles with a chance to tie it up. He does. Baldwin County with two scores to open this one up. Jumped out to the 14-0 lead, and now St. Paul's has answered back with two of their own. And so now if you're Coach McDaniel, you're thinking, all right, here's a chance at a two-for-one. We're going to get the ball here with two minutes to go. We get the ball to start the second half. So you're thinking points here and then get it back. A lot of stuff to the left side. It was Bill Johnson who got it started from Jay Green, and then out of the backfield, Ingram bobbled that one, but the swing pass. Ingram handed to him. Well, that's the pitch. The pitch. Yep, for the score. And St. Paul's has tied this one up. Nine plays, 74 yards. Well, it's no, no, basically. It's weird. <laughs> I know you love this nomenclature Even. down here in the south, right? I do. I, I'm with you. <laughs> Grayson Miles with a big, strong kick, and Mims takes it at the one. Mims trying to get the outside. Now wants to spin. He lost the football, and St. Paul's recovers. Wow. Trying to spin back, and there was nowhere to go. And so after Baldwin County recovers a St. Paul's fumble, Reggie Bracey recovers a Baldwin County kickoff fumble. Well, Mims is going to stay champion in the hurdles, and but when you run the hurdles, they don't make you carry anything. Nor turn around and go the other way. Yeah. Well, here's the key. Number 11, Julian Little oh. just maintained outside leverage where he didn't have anywhere to go. It made him just start pure in in his, in his spot there. And for God, I still got the football as well. I'm going to protect that. Big turnover gives St. Paul's the ball back at the 16. And Ingram in the backfield. Jacob Evans. Pistol formation. Ingram trying to go up the middle that time, and good job by Jeffrey Johnson, the senior, able to wrap him up. Not much space in the middle that time, but enough to have some positive yards. Picks up two on first down. As long as you don't go backwards, Coach Mass says, we'll take the field goal even if it's necessary. St. Paul's with two timeouts. 
remaining. Griffin now into block. Ingram, big hole again, and up the middle, and he's inside the 10, still driving away, and it's first and goal, St. Paul's. Yeah, all the way down to the Taylor, three. He just turned his guy out, and there was just space. The fullback came through there, and he had to make a block five yards down the field. Josh Crook finally stopped. Guys, Ingram before he got in. If this offensive line is doing this in the second quarter, <laughs> you know? You don't want to see it in the fourth. Can you imagine? Remember my man Trey Nunn in on fullback. His dad, Terry, told me he'd play a little bit of fullback. And they got Griffin in there as well. Ingram, third touchdown of the first half for the Saints. Barely touched there. St. Paul's has now scored 20 unanswered after Baldwin County jumped out to the 14-0 lead. Oh, what a change. Two minutes to go, you're getting the ball back. The Tigers think got a chance here. Let me get some points before you get it back, and then Ingram takes it in for his third touchdown here of the night thus far. Ingram's on his way to a big night, guys. Uh -huh. Had just one so far, one touchdown coming in to tonight's contest. And Miles stays perfect. Up in here, just close my eyes, saying, I like this kind of party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're going to let us run the football, we'll do it. The ball and county, you got to regroup a little bit here. It's kind of. The momentum is all shifted. You had it early, and now it's all shifted over to the St. Paul's side. Middle Roofing Center and Supply raised the roof cam. Yeah, Coach McDaniel, he's going to have to go back in and get his guys off the floor and get their minds deep into this football game and say, hey, well, as it stands right now, it's just one touchdown ahead. We've proven we can score against them. Let's come back out and score, and we've shown that we can stop them. We did that all the first quarter. Let's come back out and play the first, the second half like you played the first quarter. Miles with that strong leg. This one will go all the way into the end zone. Kirk grabs it, but will come out from there with 41 seconds. Now, 80, you know, the, you just try to get to the house now. You just try to get to halftime if you're Baldwin County. Who sackly speeds our crew before the game? Pick up a party tray of 100 or a sack of 20. A second party on your way to the game or tailgate or just get ready for a Tuesday night. Don't forget to wash it down with some of that awesome lemonade. Thanks to Fusakli's again, a part of high school football here on UTV 44. Jim, I'll take the 100 trade. I was not going to offer you anything less, Vic Bucket. <laughs> Mix. Complete. Mims able to grab that one and he's out of bounds. Across the 30 with 35 seconds left. Mims just a sophomore. Ian Mix will be doing a lot of pitch and catch for the next couple of years up at Bayman. Yeah, it's going to look good. It's only going to get better and better. Second and three here. Ball with Kennedy just one timeout left. Mix was looking to the field. Pocket collapses and he's brought down all the way back at the 24-yard line. Yeah, he saw his outlet open, but just didn't trust him. Saw that uh, St. Paul's defender lurking behind him. And smartly pulled that one down. Well, you know, and as, as bad as a sack is where you're at right now, a, you know, a turnover would have been way worse. worse. Oh, sure. So, Coach McDaniel, you know he had a timeout there. He said, I, like you said, Dan, I think he's just happy to take this one into the locker room. At 21-14 and kind of regroup a bit here. Yeah, they're on the road. He needs to have a, that conversation I mentioned earlier with him, and I'm sure he will. And Baldwin County will come back out here and give a good fight. There's somebody enjoying it right there. Daniel Foster Allen for sure. And let's go down to Amanda. She's got Coach Mask. Coach Mask, and I heard you saying that's what I'm talking about before the end of that second quarter. Talk to me about what's the energy of your players right now. Well, I, it's pretty high right now. <laughs> Wasn't very high in the first quarter, but, you know, in a game like this, this is not coach speak. It's a four-quarter game. And what we tried to, you know, got down 14 and nothing. We came back out and established the line of scrimmage, and this game's going to be one of the line of scrimmage. Now, I want to circle back on what you just said. It was a little rough in the first quarter, but you guys got three touchdowns within the second quarter of the game. Talk to me about what was what changed. What did you guys fix there to get all those points up on the scoreboard? We just settled down and did our stuff. You know, we had a, you got a play and just junk your plan after something 
bag goes wrong. We had an old town conversion and we blew a coverage, but give them credit for that too. But we, we settled down and played pretty good. Now, how do you intend on staying in the lead when we come back in the second talk quarter? About that. All, right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Coach Matt. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Savannah. Coach Mask. He's uh, happy with the team. They just put 21 straight up on the board, and Baldwin County jumped out to a quick lead, and they'll get the ball to start the second half. But we got lots coming up at halftime here. Friday Night Rivals brought to you by our friends Andy Citrin. Halftime coming up right after this. Baldwin County jumped out to a quick lead in this one. They're 1-0 in region play, and then they were on top 14-0, and St. Paul's rallied back three unanswered touchdowns to close out the first half. But, of course, every Friday night we talk about more than just football here on Friday Night Rivals. We talk about all the great things going on on the education side of things at our high school, and let's find out more about that from Amanda down on the sidelines. Amanda. That's right. I'm here with Principal Craig Smith, Baldwin County Tigers. Your team is doing really good. How does it feel to be out here tonight? Well, it's great. It's a great atmosphere. they got a, a beautiful field, beautiful facility, uh, been great hosts for us, so we really enjoyed it. Now, you guys have some really cool things happening at your school. You have mm -hmm. dual enrollment right now. I hear one of your seniors could potentially graduate with her AA. Let's talk about that program that you have at the school. Well, our dual enrollment's a partnership with Coastal Alabama, and they've been really great partners with us. We've been able to enroll just tons of students to get college credit at the same time they're getting their high school credit and at no expense right now. So that in itself is saving our parents a lot of money, and it's uh, getting our kids ready for college, and hopefully it'll lower that tuition bill at the end of it. No, we love that, and that they don't have to pay for that. That's amazing, really, really, really good. So let's talk about the sports media. We do sports media here on UTV 44, so you guys have that new program as well, and agriculture as well. Right, we've um, those fall in line with our career tech uh, programs, and sports media, we added a couple of years, and they actually do our broadcast. They started a YouTube channel, and uh, we're able to stream a lot of our events now, and it really, it works out good for our parents that can't make it on a Friday night or can't make it to a game. And uh, good exposure for our kids. They learn a lot about the equipment, a lot about the process. And um, all of our career tech programs are steadily expanding. We added sports media, I mean, sports medicine as well as sports media. We've got a large ag program that's doubled in the past four years. So uh, just a lot of exciting things going on. Training while they're young, I love that. You know, another thing I want to mention about the younger students is that there's actually middle school band members on the field right now where they get to have an opportunity to have five years playing in the band, and that experience is really amazing. Yeah, well, we've got a great partnership with the middle school band, and their director and our director actually go back and forth between our campuses during the day, and they work together well. It's been a great team, and like I said, it, for us, it means expanding our band. we got more kids performing on Friday night and just more opportunities for them. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Principal Smith. Jim, back to you. Great to have Craig Smith with us here at halftime. Talk about all the great things going on at Baldwin County High School. Really like that sports media thing they got going on there. I think that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, really, really, really cool. So uh, halftime here at uh, each week, we're going to give you three players to choose from at the end of the game for our players of the week. And last week, Daffy so impressive on the field with that win over Spanish Ford until some until, uh, forfeit had to happen. But uh, this young man had a wonderful game at running back, Dan Brennan. This guy was really good. As a matter of fact, that whole offense was really good. Trent Battle had a great night leading them at quarterback, but yeah. he ran the ball so well. And, of course, Tyler Bradley was the key guy back there toting the rock and scored the touchdown here. And Daphne looks so impressive in there on the road tonight. Playing up in Saraland, have a big tough tough of a time up there, but our player of the game each week brought to you by Herc Reynolds Pro Solutions. They help us every week, and at the end of tonight's game, we're going to give you three players to vote on. Go to utv44.com, and we'll let you know who they are at the end of tonight's game. Halftime here at E.E. E. Delaney Stadium, and St. Paul's has the lead over Baldwin County by a score of 21 to 14, and go back down to the field now and here's about the uh, here's about some of the great things educationally going on here at St. Paul's Amanda. Yes, we are with the St. Paul Saint herself, Elizabeth Gregory who is the director of enrollment here at the school. How does it feel here to be here? I see you got your your school spirit going on. Oh, I bleed. I bleed red and blue. I went to school here. I have children in school here and I work here. So it is truly my family. I love it more than anything. So this means a lot more to you being a part 
part of the enrollment team. Talk to me a little bit about what you guys do, what you guys have going on right now at the school. We have got our big admission season coming up. So we've got multiple events between now and January, February for all ages. Everything from catch a class for older kids to play dates in the science lab for younger kids. It's all on our website and we just encourage people to come check us out. Now, one thing that we talked about is that you guys have four years. Ladies and gentlemen, let's of, welcome the St. Middle, the middle school. Yes. They start in the yes. fifth grade, right? Exactly. So at St. Paul's Middle School starts in the fifth grade. It is a phenomenal year because they're all learning how to be middle school students together. They have lockers, they change classes, they all have a one-to-one -one device, but the teachers do so much nurturing and hand-holding. They just learn how to be middle schoolers. I mean, there's four years of high school, four years of college. Why would you not have four years of middle school too, just to prepare for high school? Yeah, that's awesome. What is something for parents at home or, you know, kids that potentially want to come here? What is something they can do, I guess, to get in contact with you? They can just give us a call. Our office number is 461-2131, or they can email us admissions at stpaulsmobile.net. Thank you so much. You guys are up, so I know you're super excited about we that. We are. We are pumped. <laughs> Go Saints. Go Saints. All right, Jim, back to you. All right. Thanks, Amanda. Great to hear about uh, all the great things going on at both of our schools here tonight. Our Educator Spotlight, Spotlight brought to you by Coastal Alabama Community College. Halftime on Friday Night Rivals. St. Paul's on top 21-14, 6A Region 1 matchup tonight here on UTV 44. See our halftime score here on Andy Citrin Injury Attorneys Friday Night Rivals presented by Alabama Power. And we not only have a battle on the field each week, we got a battle with some PB&J to help feed those who need it along the Gulf Coast here. Amanda's going to tell us more about that with our friends from Sonova. Amanda. Yes, that's right. We definitely have a battle. You know what? That's what I like to say brings all the schools together is this excitement with the PB&J Blitz Challenge. And right now I'm accompanied by Jackie, who represents Sonova's bank. Of course, Principal Smith and, of course, Haley with Feeding the Gulf Coast. So we're here to announce the winner. And the winner is, of course, Principal Smith with Baldwin County High School. Congratulations. You all were able to raise 366 pounds of PB&J, so that plaque belongs to you. <laughs> what does it mean to win? Well, it's great. Uh, we put the challenge to our clubs and our sponsors, and we've got some real go-getters on our staff, and they, th between them and the kids, they really took the challenge, and we appreciate it, and we'll put it to good use. Well, I want to say it was a really close battle. You guys want to say it was like 30 pounds or 30 or so pounds in between. So it was really cool to see both schools come together and that you guys won. I want to say in total so far, we have collected over 1,800 pounds of PB&J. So that would feed hundreds of people here along the Gulf Coast. It's a great co cause for schools that are watching. You guys are up next, so make sure you guys are collecting that. Now, Jackie, I want to talk about what it means for Synovus to be partnering up with these schools. Well, we really appreciate all this support that the students have, you know, bought, bought into this program and the school's participation as well. And, and you know, we're, we're really excited about partnering with uh, Feeding the Gulf Coast and, uh, you know, all the citizens they serve. So we're excited about being part of that. And now, ja and now Haley, I'm going to come closer to you. Um, you can talk more about specifically how it affects the families. Yeah, so this makes a huge impact on our communities right here along the Gulf Coast. And we're so excited to have schools like Baldwin County High School and St. Paul's and all the other schools who are participating really understand the need of hunger and help us make a difference in our community. Now, do you have any tips for the upcoming schools on how they can, you know, gain a lead and come up on top or some things that they can be doing to collect these pounds? I have heard of some administrators singing the PB&J song over the intercom. I think that's happened so far. Which um, one? Is it peanut butter jelly <laughs> that's time? The one. Um, but I think just everybody getting excited. It's fun. Um, it's in good spirit. It's a fun competition and adds another level of competitiveness to the game. Well, Principal Smith, congratulations to your entire school. Thank you guys for being here to present him with this check. And I'm going back to my boy, Jim Cox, upstairs. We've, we've come so far in three weeks, Amanda. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, it was uh, awesome. So much, uh, even uh, St. Paul's didn't win, but they, raised, they got a ton of yep. peanut butter and jelly as well. So that's really a cool thing that's uh, a new part of our broadcast every Friday night here on Friday Night Rivals. Get you ready for the second half. Baldwin County is going to get it. They need to get a little something going. Momentum's all St. Paul's right now, but Baldwin County get the ball first to start quarter number three coming up right after this. See our halftime score here on Andy Citrin Injury Attorney Friday Night. Rivals were at E.E. E. Delaney Stadium. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, and Vic Lockett. St. Paul's 
Fell behind 14-0. Baldwin County playing great defense early, recovered a kickoff fumble. They got on top early, then St. Paul's with three straight scores. Baldwin County's going to get it back here, but early on, St. Paul's literally were on their heels here for the Tigers. Yeah, and there's Mix, the quarterback, who shows he can run and also shows he can throw, and that's the second of those two passing touchdowns for Baldwin County. It was 14-0 at that point, and then really started seeing a lot to the left side, Vic Lockett. That's going to be a tough adjustment. There's so much size over there. Not, not sure what Baldwin County can do to adjust to that. Yeah, I don't think Baldwin County can grow three feet and put on 200 pounds in the <laughs> halftime, so they're going to have a tough time trying to stop that big line, and they really started asserting themselves in the second quarter of this game. You see our halftime stats, just three first downs for Baldwin County, but took advantage of the short field, and See total yards, 208 yards of offense in the first half for St. Paul's. Two big turnovers, too. Both led to touchdowns. One for Baldwin County getting them up 14-0. And the second one was St. Paul's recovering a fumble, and that got them up at the end of the half. See Mix 7-10 so far. Green 11-15. Ingram with a big first half on the ground as we get ready to start. Third quarter here, and... Curious to hear what Coach McDaniel had to say, say to Amanda as his team came out of the locker room, and they'll get the ball here first, and we'll find out what he had to say is Miles with another good, strong kick, and Kirk carries that one out across the 20. Let's go down to Amanda and find out what Baldwin County head coach Nathan McDaniel had to say. Amanda. Hey, Jim, yes, Coach McDaniel was pretty short with his words, but he mentioned something that you guys mentioned before. You know, they have to make some adjustments in this next half of the game. Um, he said they were leaning a lot on the O-line, and so now they just got to get back in there and get some more scores on the board. Um, I did also ask him about the tight end that we seen earlier, unfortunately, get injured on the field, and I think he did, in fact, mention that it is a broken tibia. Jim, back to you. Tough to hear about J.W. Jackson there, so we'll see. Reyes for Jackson? Yep, the sophomore. Anthony Mix on the keeper, cuts it back up the middle, and he's across the 30, out to the 31-yard line. A nice up. little run pass option, and he decided, I'll just run it. Manigault there with the stop. This is two-year starter on this St. Paul's defense. And this is a good football team. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, uh, I think we're looking at two good football teams here. Yeah, I agree. But as far as St. Paul's, the fact that they are now in 6A, oh. you put this team back where they were in 5A, it's like an all-star team. <laughs> it's not a handoff. Not much doing there. Of course, St. Paul's won 5A state championship in 2014, 15, and 2017. And then kind of we were surprised on the competitive balance rule that bumped them up to 6A last year. They won too much. Yeah. Quite frankly. Yep. So now Baldwin County at third and four. Makes it his true crew trying to convert here. Dump it out of the backfield. Read very well and blown up. What a play. Trayvon Bellamy just comes up there and just sticks him. Stein is the drive, and that was a key third down. You know, you didn't want to come out of the half and get a quick three and out, but that's exactly what St. Paul's forced. Mix went to Stanley, and then Bellamy. Yep, Bellamy in there to blow that one up for the St. Paul's defense, and now Hunter Odom, who's had a great night punting the football here tonight for the Tigers. With another great kick. High. Fair catch be called for it. Javante Graves Billups has that one slipped through his hands, but he falls on it. Yeah, he's very fortunate he was able to collect that with him because it hung up there for a while, and I know he started hearing footsteps, and that uh, certainly made him fumble the football. Yeah, a lot of hang time on that punt from Odom, but St. Paul's with good field position here at the 37. And we look at the 6A top 10, Sarah Land. 2-0 so far, 42-6 at the half on top of Daphne. 42 first half points. Hudson Valley, Marshall Shoals, the rest there. On the backfield, Ingram with the reception, a jump cut, and he's across the 40 to the 43-yard line. I imagine Coach Massey wants to get him as many touches in as he can, get this score widened out, and let him uh, rest a little bit later. Good block on the screen by Passau. Picked up a five on first down. Evans in the block. Head coach Steve Mask. 
eighth year here at St. Paul's. Tripped up Ingram. I think he tripped over his own fullback that time, not necessarily the defenders. Yeah, Rico Earl was in there as well, though, helping to discombobulate things a bit. Yeah, pushing the fullback back. Yep. Third. Not the direction you want to go, Dan. No. <laughs> on offense. No. Third and five here for St. Paul's boy. It'd be a big stop right here for Baldwin County to quickly get the ball back. Yeah, they desperately need a three and out against this St. Paul's offense. St. Paul's has scored. 21 answer, unanswered here. Johnson upended right at the 40 yard line. Great coverage. And the stop there is Cam Palmer. Yeah, Cam Palmer made a play right there. He's played well at corner tonight. Yeah, this is very similar to the play we saw that stalled the uh, Baldwin County drive. Yep. The other side of the field. Good anticipation and penetration. And uh, in the end, you got to make the tackle, and he does. He made it. Upended him. Passo on to punt. Two quick three announcements by both offenses. The yep. defense is starting to play a little bit, huh? Crook back. Good high punt from Paso, and Crook will fair catch this one at the 29. So Baldwin County gets it back. Hey, we asked you this trivia question about who was our, who's the all-time winningest coach at Baldwin County High School? You're going to be very impressed by your friend Dan. Okay? All right. The reason is when we went up there to Baldwin County to, to Baby Net and I noticed that the field was named after somebody. Yep. Remember the conversation we had? I do. And it was Lyle Underwood Field, and winning his coach in the history of the school. I did a little research about him after that game. Yep. And uh, there you go. That's how you get the stadium named after you, a record like that. That one incomplete. Were they going to say that was a lateral that bounced? As Mims picked that one up. It's the only way. Definitely hit the ground. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see if they're going to let the play stand. You don't see the one-hop pass called all that often. I tell you what, <laughs> uh, uh, in middle school, we actually had a play called oh, yeah. like that. That's definitely the – that was not the – I don't think that's how they intended no, it to go. But it, it was a lateral. Yeah, it definitely was a lateral. <laughs> we'll get back to Lyle Underwood in just a second for in Baldwin County. So they pick up eight. And now Stanley – Going to break a tackle at midfield, and he's into St. Paul's territory, still on his feet before he's pushed out of bounds. That's and what Baldwin County needed right yep. there. Need a little momentum as well and a little energy as James Stanley. Shows the juice right here to ignite his team. Picks up 34, slipping tackles up the far side, and Bellamy finally pushes him out of bounds. Lyle Underwood have played it. Grew up in Foley, graduated Foley High School, and then... He's in the Foley Hall of Fame of Baldwin County Athletic Hall of Fame as well. And then in 2011, he went to the Alabama High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame. Highly decorated. Yep. Stanley watches as Mix keeps this one. He's inside the 20. Good for another first down here for the Tigers. Lyle Underwood during his time at uh, Baldwin County High School also... 40 to 45 of his players went on to play in college. Wow. I forget what the number was, but I remember reading it a year ago and thinking, wow, they were, they had some players back then, but certainly they were coached up by a guy that had, took his teams to a lot of wins. Went to five, went to the playoffs five different times. Well, that's a great accolade. He's developed his players and helped him become great men in this country. At the 20 here for the Tigers. Mix rolling out pressure coming from the backside. He's going to keep it, cuts it inside the 20, and a flag, and now a flag late, and now a flag, three different flags here. Got one that looks like a hold, one at the point of contact, and then one, two flags in the secondary. So you got a variety here, huh? It's more flags than we had the entire first half, I believe. <laughs> no, you were absolutely accurate about that. So the first one going to be... Yes, that's going to be a hold, and then I didn't see if maybe maybe a face mask at the at the end of the play, maybe. It's been a little chippy. Yeah, and then I'm not sure about the flags back just outside the goal line. There's the hold. There's the hold. Defensive holding. All set. Replay first down. Okay, so just two. Net, net, we'll do it all again, and that didn't count. Weird to see a defensive holding call at the point of 
contact yeah. at the end of the play here. Let's, okay, there's a there was a handful of jersey there. And then two flags came in. Well, I think the holding may have been back on the receiver somewhere. Yeah, that was another the, the, the defensive holding. Mm-hmm. Offensive holding probably handled in the interior yeah. somewhere. All right, so that just washes out the play. Yep. We'll redo it again. First and 10 at the 20 for the Tigers. Mix to set up a screen, and that one incomplete. Mills Hensley. He blew that up, didn't he? Yep, he really did a great job there to break that one up. So second and 10 coming for the Tigers as we're halfway through. You know, Baldwin County's tried a couple of screens, and none of them have been successful. St. Paul's is just really, really prepared for that play. That successful going to the quick screen to Artavius Crook, and he'll line up out wide. Williams will line up in the slot, but the officials are going to take a heat timeout here. 5.57 to go in the third. 21-14 St. Paul's, but Baldwin County's on the move. They're at the Saints 20. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett, Amanda Booz on the sideline, Jared Kihas, his entire crew here at E. Delaney Stadium. Statistician David Sharp here on second and ten for the Tigers. Mims going to the corner of the end zone, floats that one up, high points, bobbled and not able to come down with it, is trying to go to Mims. I thought Mims yeah. had the opportunity to make that play. Correction, I think that is the crook, crook over there. Crook yeah. Crook again, yeah. The taller of the two. Yeah. Let's hope he's okay there. He's going to collect this in. He got his eyes on the ball. Zach Gray kind of stumbled there. And, ooh. Ooh. Looks like he, yeah. see his helmet came off as he banged his head on the turf there. Oh, mm. man. Brian Metz. You don't like when the athletic trainer gets as much television as Brian has gotten here. Yeah, too much uh, tonight. Tonight, yeah. So let's pray this was not as serious as the previous injury. Looks like yeah, he's, he's gonna, getting up on his... On his seat now and on his feet now. Thank God for that. As he tries to come in. He came down awkwardly. Yeah. Really, his helmet was almost coming off on the way down. Yeah, I noticed mm -hmm. that. Third and ten now coming up for <coughs> the Tigers. If you're just joining us, Baldwin County jumped out to a 14-0 lead in the first half, and then St. Paul's Came back with three unanswered scores. Well, speaking of joining us, I'm sure Miss Millie Fritz is uh, joining us tonight. Hello to her. So, Brian Metz doing a little like concussion kind of testing over there to make sure Cook was okay. Now they get this one off to Mims and nothing doing there as the Saints have that one sniffed out. Trayvon Bellamy again over there and fourth down coming up. We'll see if Coach McDaniel sends in the field goal team or if they go for it on fourth and 11. Like well, you've got to you, you have a kicker that you feel confident with, and this is a long kick in high school, Jim, so. About a 37-yarder, and not everybody's got that guy. <laughs> so they'll leave. Anthony Mix Jr. in there at quarterback here on fourth and 11. Crook still on the sidelines as well. No, actually, he just checked back in and came in the slot. There's a timeout by Baldwin County right before the play. So good to see Crook back out there. So uh, safe to say he passed the concussion yeah. protocol test. Yes. Huh? Thank God for that. Certainly don't want to have any head injuries with these kids, certainly at a young age like this, or next, any type of injury. Yeah, next week will be. Theodore 7A matchup, Fairhope and Theodore here on Friday Night Rivals. Fairhope leading Murphy in their matchup here tonight. And this week, last week, and next week, Metal Roofing Center and Supply will be there with us for our Raise the Roof Cam. Also, Barrow Fine Furniture. Thanks for them for jumping on high school football this year. And Herc Reynolds. Generator out for us each week to use and some other things that can help you as well. 
a weekend project or you know, on a big commercial level, they can help you there as well. Dan Brenner needs a wood splitter over the weekend if he needs to get ready for fire fireplace season. Yeah, Burke yeah, Reynolds yeah. can help you with that. Just need one of the worst ways, Jim. I can't even get into it. It, <laughs> it pains me. I've seen you back up the KS trade trailer. I'm not sure I want to see a wood splitter you towing up behind me. <laughs> Fourth down here. Mix lobbing it up. Underthrown a bit and picked off. Julian Little, the senior, comes up with the interception. Very athletic tracking the football right there. Got Our his head around, got his on. hips around. Flag on the far side of the field and by Daniel Foster Allen's reaction. See, may get the all ball back offensively. Let's see what's happening here. Is that one just a little underthrown and yeah, the legal man downfield, so I think. Uh, yep. So Crook unable to come up with it in the we'll interception. Still go offensively. Yep. For St. Paul's. Pin St. Paul's back further, but they come up with a stop there on fourth down. That was a real good-looking drive there for the Tigers until you know they got it first and ten at the twenty, and then didn't get another yard after that. Well, teams like to run it out when they're backed up like this, and if there's a team equipped to do that. You know, when you look at this roster and this offensive lineup, and they got a fullback in there, and that Ingram can really shift and, and then go. Green under center. Ingram right up the middle and gives him a little breathing room up to the 18 yard line. So we like Ingram, don't we? Oh, yeah. Picks up 10. Now they're going to give him nine. They're going to be just short of the first down. Yeah, played a bunch last year for this yeah. same team. Said also plays. Oh, now they're going to say he did get the first down. Can play some linebacker for St. Paul's if needed. Well, nothing fancy about that play. He just hit up in that A gap and he just kept going north and south. And the play developed very quickly as well. The hole opened up quickly. Yep. A good interior play by that big offensive line. Double tight ends and Ingram. Up the middle, makes one man miss. Now he's across the 30, and Jordan Ingram all the way into Baldwin County territory, knocked out of bounds inside the 40-yard line, a pickup of 42. Well, he did have to make one side step yeah. right there. What, what, what I like about Ingram <laughs> right is there. he makes side steps, and then, but he doesn't lose near, nearly any speed at all. Mm -hmm. So when he jumps to the left or the right, he gets back to sprint mode real quick. That's the sign of a great back there. When you're able to make a backer miss in the hole, mm -hmm. then you've got some talent. Marius Carter, the freshman there. I think, whoa, I hadn't seen that, be yep. hadn't seen that before. So, again, St. Paul's able to get out from that, that hole simply by turning and handing the ball to Ingram and blocking well. 39, and they give it off to Abel. He'll pick up five on first down. Well, they're feeling it now. This offensive line, you can just see yep. in their body language. Wow. Ingram, you may have a chance to vote for him as our player of the game. Well, oh, that now 145 kind of snuck up on me, Dan. We just ripped off 42 on that last one. Yeah. So, oh, well, that's what will happen. There it was. <laughs> you know, he only had. I was a, taking a nap there in third yeah, quarter. He only had 110 yards rushing in the first two weeks coming into this right. one. on second down go right back and on the right side Ingram will get a couple this time before Jeffrey Johnson for the Tigers is there third and about three well this Bowen County defense guys has got to be really mentally tough right now because that offensive line is so big uh, and, the, and Ingram is so talented, but they, they've got to play, play to play, right, Vic? Absolutely. And then to add insult to injury, they bring Dana Foster out in. Wow. Daniel. Load up the backfield. Give it off to Ingram. Ingram to the 25, another St. Paul's first down. He's smooth. And if you, you're a big lineman like that, you no, love nothing more than run blocking, right, yeah, Absolutely. Blocking? They just want to mash on you at this point. I'll tell you what, right guard Peyton Maple is starting to stand out too. 678. It's getting great 
push. Well, there's big 63, there's big 68, there's big 78, there's really, really big 76. And then, Brady Ward. And then look at Taylor. Green. Looking for the corner, wide open, touchdown, Saints, Will Paso, his first touchdown reception of the year. Now, that's what the run will do for you. It, it did set it. up the pass. I mean, the safety was just peeking in the backfield, way too late getting over there to help that corner on that uh, go round. Yeah, that's the last thing that the safety was looking for right Absolutely. there. 25-yard touchdown pass from Green. The Green's having a nice day. This is a great throw. Mm. Paso, he, he won't have another more open touchdown reception. I don't think in St. Paul's <laughs> career. Yeah, he was doing that pregame. Miles here to try to have the Saints double up the Tigers, and he does. 28 straight scored here by St. Paul's. You know, just a couple of minutes back on the clock, and Baldwin County was in a position to first down at the 20 and the Saints. It up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that offensive line took over on that drive. We called their numbers and their names quite a bit. Good bloodlines, Ivan Schultz, son of uh, Roger Schultz, Brady Ward, son of Brian Ward. He's an LSU player. Look at that, 94 yards on just seven plays. So you know those linemen are getting some coaching at home. Coaching and adequate meals. <laughs> Well, I bet Brian and Roger probably want a little supplements on that. They're probably saying, hey, I need some help to beat these monsters. They can't wait till they get on scholarship for someone else. Yeah, <laughs> grocery bill alone. Mims. Around the 30-yard line. Anthony Mix Jr. And the Tiger offense come back out here. Well, if Mix has got some magic, it's time for him to pull his hat out. He's played Saint, well. He's played well here tonight. He has. The St. Paul's defense really, really uh, runs to the ball. They've got a lot of good athletes on defense, too. And there's just not a whole lot of room out there for Mix to make any magic. He has good bloodlines on that side as well. Stack two receivers. Bottom of the screen, look for a little bubble screen here. That one, Taquan Williams brought down as soon as he made the catch. Julian Little, who had the interception on the last drive, stayed home on that one, shed a block, and made the stop. Yeah, yeah it's all left right there. He ran right through a block. I mean, it was one on one out there. He knew what was coming, and uh, he won the battle and got the tackle. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do on defense. You, you may get blocked, but you can't stay blocked. Lose four on first down. We've got them off schedule right here, Jim. Mix going to keep this one. And might have thought, now I wish you would have given it off to the back as a sea of red jerseys stops him there. Bracey. St. Paul's there. continue to keep them off schedule even further now. Kenny Brown playing a little linebacker in there on the tackle as well and now third and 12. Oh, County's kind of stalling out on that last drive and now they're going backwards on this one. It's getting totally bogged down. Mix looking as to air it out down the near side and it's overthrown as he was trying to come to Williams and incomplete. I tell you what, Julian Little is playing a ball game. He was in great position yep. here. He kind of had to receive a bracket. He was on the outside, and then his safety was coming from the inside. Yeah, that, and Little was still trying to make a play from the backside. And that's what I've noticed, Vic. You know, on the St. Paul's defense, they've got good players at every level. Mm -hmm. I mean, good, efficient, smart players. Not just athletes, but guys that certainly know what they're doing and can execute. Well, you know, you got to credit Coach Mass to get them knowing what they're doing and get lined up to play. Wow, another great punt here from Odom. And Tante Graves Billups backed away at the last second and took a bit of a St. Paul's bounce to the 40. He's hungry, too. He wants to make a play. That easily could have bounced 
at him. Yeah, could have been disastrous. Yep. St. Paul's catches a break. Latter stages of the third quarter here. Saints will take back over at the 40. Thanks to Coastal Alabama Community College. Longtime partner of high school football, and we welcome Sonovas here doing a great job partnering up with Feeding the Gulf Coast and Fusaklis feeding our crew here. We should keep track of how many pounds Fusaklis brings during a high school football season <laughs> to feed our, our crew. Well, you know, I get a flock going. Green gives it off to Ingram on the right side, and Ingram is going to have a first down and still in a seat, steps out of bounds, cross midfield, and the Baldwin County territory picks up 15. Oh, well, that's coming back a hold on the they Saints. Right on the corner, right on the edge there, I think, Jim. But Ingram, just something about the, the way that he moves as an athlete. Just very, very smooth, Vic. You mm -hmm. almost like never see him sweat. He can see the hole. He can see where he wants to go, and he can get there. Like a duck on top of the water, right? Exactly. <laughs> Holding against the offense. Ten yards and ball goes down. And... Well, now they get St. Paul's off schedule there. You know, Coach yep. Mash was having visions of mashing through to the fourth quarter here with some runs. And they have to air it out. First and 24. It's a costly holding penalty. Green comes out here to Johnson. Johnson across the 40, across the original line of scrimmage, and now... Going to bring up a second and manageable here to start the fourth quarter for St. Paul's. So Green gets them back on schedule. That's the difference in St. Paul's offense and Baldwin County's offense tonight. Three in the books here at E.E. E. Delaney Stadium. St. Paul's on top of Baldwin County. 28 to 14. Fourth quarter coming up here on Friday Night Rivals. Start quarter number four on Friday Night Rivals, brought to you by Andy Citrin Injury Attorneys and also our friends at Alabama Power, Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett, Amanda Booz on the sideline. Our entire UTV 44 crew headed up by Jared Kihas and Jared Ingram still on his feet. He's got a first down and lumbers with those long strides inside the 30, inside the 20, cuts it back, and he's all the way inside the Baldwin County 15. Good work 40, in the interior. 43 Again. yards. He starts in the A gap, but then he just breaks it out wide. Yeah, he makes the, the quick shifts that he's able to do, keep his acceleration. And he's having a, he is having quite an evening, guys. Look at Griffin with the downfield block there. All the way downfield. Yep. So starting in the middle there with Ivan Schultz, just turning his guy and giving him some space in that A gap. And then he just turns on the speed and takes it outside. Keith Ingram in the backfield, and this time he'll fall ahead for one. As big Jeremy Moore said, "All right, I've seen enough of that. <laughs> slow this, slow this train down a little bit." Yeah, they even had the safety up there, Tayshawn Grant, which I think he's down now. Yeah, hopefully he's okay. Moore's kind of outnumbered. You know, he's a pretty good player, but they're able to nullify him and the rest of that line. And, and, and like we were talking about, it, you, you just can't counter that or make adjustments no. when there's that much size difference. Now you bring more people up to the line of scrimmage, but eventually that's going to get you in trouble. And there's Ingram just one yard short of 200 on the night. And of course, the double century mark. Yeah, just had that call on the last drive brought back after a holding call that would have had him over 200. I'd like to make a point about this offensive line too, because they're big, but, but it's, it, we were talking about green in the break and how well he's looked and you made the point i don't think he's been touched and talking about the quarterback jay green so this offensive line as big as they are and you would imagine that this is what they're going to do well run block yep uh, it's two different skills really but they have really protected the quarterback as well maybe just because it's it's such a long bypass to get around them you, you got to google it <laughs> <laughs> use your gps yeah asking siri how to get there 
Siri responds, no viable pass. <laughs> but they've done a good job both run blocking and protecting the quarterback. So if you're Baldwin County, you really need to force a turnover here. Try to get a little momentum back and also get the football back as Green wants to put it in the air. Pressure coming. Johnson chasing after. Now Green just throws this one away. Jamal's decision. He may have had the uh, slot guy open early, but didn't see him. Yeah, he was uh, good. Green also does a nice job when he is pressured. He's, he's not a scrambler necessarily, but he's got good enough quick feet to, to get out of the way of trouble and, and uh, not take the loss. Yep. Yeah, but Banks Griffin is going to tell him man, when he gets back in the huddle, man, I was wide open. And Green's going to say, well, you didn't have Jeffrey Johnson bearing down on <laughs> yeah. you uh, right. like yeah, well, I did. Well, you were wide open. Let me tell you what was happening to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Third and eight. Let's see if the Baldwin County defense can come with a hold here. Ingram rolls out to the right, looks, fires to the end zone, dropped. Yeah, he dropped that one in there, just couldn't hang on to it. Yeah, was trying to come to Javante Graves Billups, the junior, and now Grayson Miles will come on for the field goal. Watch here is Green. Slide the pocket over. Great throw, yeah. and, and he had pressure in his face again. I'm, I've been impressed with Green. I would agree. And I think Javante Graves Billups would like to have that one back. Yeah. So this will be a 30-yard attempt for Grayson Miles, who has a big leg. Expand the St. Paul's lead. Well, that one is blocked, bounced, and picked up by the Tigers up the near side. As that was Keon Palmer picked it up, and he's all the way out across the 40 and said, all right, Baldwin County needs a turnover. Well, they come up with a block, and now they've got good field position. And a lot of football left be played, and we'll see if the junior, the sophomore quarterback can lead him down and get him within a score. Oh, yeah, that young guy can run. We know that. And this is a great play, a great hustle play here on the part of St. Paul's. Is it the holder that gets over this? It is. Well, the Crimson Tide has seen that turn bad for sure. Not sure if it was big Jeremy Morrow got his hand on that. It was in the middle of the line where the block came from. So good point, Dan, by the offense hustling there. Yeah, they saved that touchdown. McFadden, who is a free safety on defense. We got Coleman and Stanley in the backfield with Mix. Mix setting up, wants to air it out. Looking to go down the far side. He's got Crook down to the one yard line. Wow. Martavius Crook 60 yard reception and one short of pay dirt and now the Tigers knocking on the door again. Yeah, look yeah. at this. I mean this quarterback sits tall in the pocket. Just slings it up there and says run under it. And he does. Great concentration by Crook to come up with a reception as well. Who's the last quarterback we saw with an arm that electric? I don't know. I have to think about that one for a minute, you know. <laughs> If I have it all. Last football <laughs> game I watched, uh, Mitch Trubisky does not come to mind. <laughs> <laughs> First and goal at the one for the Tigers. Mix gives it off to Stanley, and he's in for the score. Yeah, good job there by... I almost thought I heard a whistle before the snap there. But Stanley goes down low and lunges forward to get the score, and... Well, Coach McDaniel, good call there. Let's not get cute. Let's just play football and run this thing in. Wow. Might have got a favorable spot there. Well, no fortune of an instant replay to overturn that call or review every touchdown. So as it stands now, Baldwin County is within a touchdown and striking this as a same call. Yep. Kalsey on for the point after, and it's now 28-21. With Back to a ball game, guys. Yeah. Just two minutes gone by here in the fourth. Two-play drive. 
after the block field goal. Well, we so, said early that uh, Mix can strike anywhere on the field, and right there, he really showed his arm off, along with that speedy receiver you've been talking about. Yep. Here it is, guys. It's high school sophomore. Sophomore. Look at the throw. But it's not I just mean, he threw it a long way. No. It's where he placed it. Yeah, yeah. it's incredible. The accuracy was there. So there's the touchdown for Stanley. Wow. So we've had a fumble. Uh, on a kickoff return by St. Paul's that resulted in a Baldwin County touchdown. Then Baldwin County fumbled a kickoff that resulted in a St. Paul's touchdown. And now a blocked field goal sets up a two-play drive for the Tigers. And now they got to be feeling much better about themselves. They hadn't had a lot to be excited about since the first quarter. Well, let's see if the momentum stays with them at this point. Mason Kelly to kick on the far side and able out to the 35-yard line. Every week, we'd like to highlight our scholastic athletes. Baldwin County, Tanner Smith, the senior, 4.32 GPA, football player, National Honor Society, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, junior ambassador, Boise State representative, Eagle Scout candidate. Very impressive for that young man. He's going to go to South and study engineering. So, great job there in the classroom by Tanner Smith. Maybe he'll be challenged at South. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drive over the bridge he builds. Uh huh. Are they going to build one? <laughs> Not that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ingram bounces free to the 42 yard line. Our scholastic athlete for the St. Saint Paul's Saints, Isabella Valenzuela. 4.3 GPA, 29 on ACD, ACT, everything indoor. Outdoor track, three-time cross-country, 5A champ, female runner of the year, headmaster's wow. list. She's going to UAB or Southern Miss, and if Jared Kihas has anything to say about it, she's going to Southern Miss. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she, can, she can just run there. Uh, so many accomplishments running track, both indoors and cross-country here at St. Paul's as Ingram well over the 200-yard mark now. He's, He's just having fun, I think. He is. <laughs> Very instinctive. Everything's runner. just working for him. They just pop it outside. They're blocking the trash. They're blocking like crazy. Big, but he's making quick, correct decisions mm -hmm. every time. Josh Crook came over and delivered a big hit at the end of that drive. That was already after Ingram he picked up the first down. Wow! Right up Old Shell Road. Seven seven with three thirty left. UMS right at UMS Andalusia. and Andalusia. Ingram to the 40. Bring up second down here to the Saints with four minutes gone in the fourth. This has been a Game of swings, 14-0 Baldwin County. Then it was four straight touchdowns by St. Paul's to make it 28-14. And now Baldwin County with a touchdown here in the fourth to cut the lead to seven. Green drops back. Looking for Javante Graves Billups. There was some contact, and that one was just floated up there and incomplete. Yeah, and they got to, they got to the quarterback, too. And yep. that's why the pass was... Uh, just air. Yeah. yeah. He just put it up there and try to get all he can on it. <laughs> How about right up after an 80-yard touchdown by Andalusia, Edward White for UMS returns the kick for a touchdown. It's 14-7 oh, wow. UMS. Watch the pressure here. He had pressure in his face to his backside, and yeah. obviously that's why that pass was off. Just hanging up there. Yeah. So third down. Let's see if the Tigers can get a stand here at the 41. Green quickly out to the far side to Johnson. He's wrapped up immediately by Josh Crook for a loss. Well, they got the stand that they need right there. They did, and they, they did it when UMA, or rather St. Paul's took that shot on second and seven that was probably open if they didn't get the pressure, but they did, and Green couldn't connect, and now... Ball and County seen that play a few times tonight they, here they as have. well. They're on... Third down, it's a little bring play by that young man right there. And when you're not putting the ball in Ingram's hands behind that line, you're kind of letting Baldwin County off the hook a little bit the way they 
than running the football. All right, so Paso to punt. He's got a big leg, and this is a low end over end kick. And it goes, and does it make it to the end zone? Yes, it does. As Crook watched it go by, that was a line drive, and it was quickly heading toward the end zone. Then it kind of checked up a little bit at about the two, but it goes. Makes Crook decision look good. Yeah, so <laughs> Owen County will now get it back out at the 20. Don't forget, in tonight's game, go to utb44.com and have a chance to vote on our player of the game selection. We'll give you three of them to choose from. And then we'll tell you who you vote as the winner next week at halftime when we're out at Theodore for the Theodore Fairhope 7A matchup here on Friday Night Rivals. Scott Delaney texting in, watching the game tonight. The stadium named after his grandfather. It'd be nice if he was here. Well, Pop Pop Stadium and all. Yeah, he, he gets out here. Mm -hmm. So does his brother Michael. But they're home watching tonight. Well, we're glad they're watching. We're glad that uh, all of you that are kind of supporting high school football by watching what uh, we do on Friday nights, even if this is not one of your schools or teams, uh, we appreciate the eyeballs. Absolutely. You're being treated to a heck of a game here tonight. Yep. As our Metal Roofing Center and Supply raise the roof cam. 28-21. Ball and County back with the football here. Plan on getting out to Lad tomorrow night to uh, check out the Jackson State mascot. They got a 15-yard <laughs> penalty last week. <laughs> He's part of the attraction for me. Jags and Jackson. You try to draw State. another one. You try to draw another penalty on him. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> out of the backfield that goes through Stanley's hands and I'm gonna say it's incomplete. Yeah. Try to do that little swing pass out there. A little too much on it. Harris Sankey was all over that one as well. He did the safe thing. You never know what the ref's going to decide in terms of being a lateral or not. Now we see so get the football. Jordan Ingram out there playing safety. Yeah. For all the Saints hand, on this all drive. All hands on deck. Yeah. yeah. That's maximizing your talent right yeah, there. It huh? is. It is. Young man really hasn't done much running tonight, so we'll put him <laughs> at safety to cover the deep threat. Where he can run around. Pressure coming from the outside. Bracy able to get. Mix and bring him down. Yeah, they bring in the heat now to kind of not let this quarterback get set back there and get comfortable and fire that arm up he's got. The impressive young guy who right now is committed to the University of Iowa up in the Big Ten, and we had a chance to visit with him. Good player. Great job in the classroom as well. Yeah. One of the leaders of this of this team and just a treat of a young man to get to know. Steve yeah, Mask was singing his praises as well. I'm just going to give him my lapel mic and say, tag, you're it. You got, you got this. <laughs> you and Cox got it the rest of the way. <laughs> yeah. Third and 15 for Mix and the Tigers. Yeah. This will be for the snap. I'm not. Did they get that one off? Oh, you got a false start over here. Yeah. That's going to turn into third and 20. My good friend Scooter over there on the line, Judge, making that call. Well, we know that Mix can throw it 20 yards, <laughs> by the way. With an easy flick of the wrist. Yeah. He can throw it 30 lefty. <laughs> if they protect him, Jim, they can still get a big play. Yep. They'll empty the backfield. Five receivers. Three-man front for the Saints now. Showing some pressure from the linebacker. And Mix rolls out, gets away from Allen Foster. And now he's being wrapped up, still on his feet. Play had no chance. Progress. Yeah. Boy, they Good defense by St. Paul. Only rush three that they brought a linebacker on a little delayed. Blitz there, but good coverage downfield. And just no chance for Mix to get that one off. I don't know how they rushed three and nine guys pushed him out of bounds. <laughs> That's all changed by the end of the play. Yeah, Foster Allen, I think he split the double team to get this yep. thing going. He's had a good game, huh? He had a good game, and he's probably going to have a pretty good career. His mother, director of finance for Mobile County, she's going to be directing his finances, I think, in a few years, and he got, he'll be making a lot of money. Yeah. 
High kick and Javante Graves Billups. Good coverage down there as Tayshawn Grant. Tigers came it. down to play football, Jim. No question. Their first time ever to St. Paul's. Not intimidated by the environment, the no. stadium. Man. They said, hey, or, we're we're football team too. Or the team. Yeah. yeah. Really like their coach, Nathan McDaniel. He and his wife celebrating their anniversary on Wednesday night after our taping of the pregame show. Kept, Dan and I just kept waiting for an invite to the anniversary dinner, and it just never, never came. No, I don't think that would have been just never, it was, never, it never came. It was so curious, wasn't yeah. it? I thought for a second. So you're going to eat right now? Yeah, somewhere nice. <laughs> Did you guys want to give play-by-play -play of that? Uh, Lovely couple. Saints back with it. Draw here from Green. and Pick up a couple before he's stopped on the plate. Darius Woodard. Sophomore linebacker came in to make the stop for the Tigers. Design quarterback keeper all the way looked like there. And Johnson, who's Johnson, the first one there, then Woodard was there. And Johnson, who had the big game, two sacks last week, and He's really okay, played man. well. Yeah. I got to say, you know, Green is not a little guy. That's a very powerful uh, move right there. Green is solid. Kenny Brown back in it. Receiver split out to the bottom of the screen here on second and seven with four minutes to go. Baldwin County with two timeouts remaining. Green falls, and the ball came. I thought the ball came loose. It did not. Just a great a penetration there. there. Yeah, they got, got, look like Green got stepped on as he was pulling away from center, and Johnson was there. He was very fortunate to maybe get that handoff right there. Let's see that. Oh, wow. Well, they're sticking some helmets in there now, huh, Daniel? Yeah, they are. They're, they're, you're trying to block them, but instead, uh, Jamarius Carter lays a block on you. Yeah, he's just a fresh blow. Third and seven here for the Saints. Can the Tiger defense get a stop and get the ball back to their talented sophomore quarterback? The senior quarterback for St. Paul's will take the snap. Out of the backfield to Jordan Ingram, and Ingram's going to be wrestled down as that one was a little behind him through the timing off, and Jeffrey Johnson all over on that series for the Tigers. Yeah, well, Coach great. Mass thinking, you know, hey, we need this big third down. Let me get it to our best player who's hot tonight. But uh, the Tigers are up to the task to bring him down. And just that split second of the ball being behind him there in the bobble mm -hmm. that allowed Johnson to come in and... He didn't get a chance to square up. Nope, and the way Johnson pursues, too, and the way he tackles, that, that play was over. Clock still running here. We've got two timeouts, so yep. I'm curious as to exactly how they're going to use them. Yep, decides to keep one here, and St. Paul's will just maybe see if they snap it or take the delay. No, they do snap it in. Paso, punt, crook the fair catch of the 16, so here you go, 228 to go, down by seven. Your sophomore quarterback, five and two, is a starter at Baldwin County High School. Part of that coming last year as a freshman as he was leading this team in the second half of the season. Baldwin County still has plenty, plenty life. And it's not just that he wins. It's the manner in which he wins with that amazing arm yep. and athletic ability. But He can pull it down and yep. bust off a big one that way as well. Here we go. Quickly out the far side. Able to get that one complete to Williams, who I don't think to say he stayed in bounds. Yep, quick out. But they say wind the clock. That's a good way to start the drive, though. Yep. Picks up eight, gives him a little bit of room here. Lots of time. just like to see him get out of bounds. Right. Credit St. Paul's for protecting the boundary. Mix looking pressure coming now. He's going to pull it down and gets hit from behind, but he's going to fall forward to get the first down because Daniel Foster Allen hit him from behind and drove him forward. So that'll stop the clock while they move the chains and first down here for the Tigers. Good kids having a game. St. Paul's played an overtime game last week. Baldwin County has not gone to overtime since 1998. Wow. Jack French days. <laughs> Mix. Floats it again out of the backfield, able to get to 
Stanley, and Stanley makes a move, and he's across midfield, still on his feet, all the way down to the 37-yard line, and that'll stop the clock with another first down and a pickup of 36. Yeah, Harris, thank you. I mean, he saved a touchdown, just maintaining his leverage on that back, because otherwise, yeah, it was, Jim would have been calling touchdown. Yeah, it was one-on-one -on -one in more ways than one here at the end of this one. Good leverage right there to bring him down. Sure tackle, wrap up. Get to the 37. Stanley, the senior, rushed for over 100 yards last week. Give it to him this time. Cuts it back, and he's up near the 30. He'll pick up seven on first down as we're approaching a minute to go here. Still holding his timeouts in his back pocket. Got two of them. Crook has been the deep threat for the Tigers tonight. Mix. Far side and incomplete. That'll stop the clock as he was trying to go back to Williams. There's a kid that's made a lot of plays tonight, too. Once again, showing up little. Yep, he's got an interception and he's played well over there. So third and three. Clock stops with the incomplete pass. Yeah, it's only third down. Not fourth. We'll take both of them if it's necessary. So third and three. Here for the Tigers. Give it off to Stanley. He's got the first down. He's inside the 20. Upended there, but he's at the 19. And fresh set of downs for Baldwin County. Well, who saw this coming? A lot of it on the ground. A lot of it this guy. Also, that little swing pass. He got great blocking on the outside. That was the play that got them where they are now or in that territory. Now they start the clock. They have to hurry. They're going to spike it. Oh boy, they lost some valuable time there, but still okay. Plenty of time. They're inside the 20. Two timeouts. Yeah, that's a young quarterback in the communication between the coach and him. They kind of blew some time off the clock, but still plenty, plenty of time. Two timeouts to get into the end zone. And the players to do it. Yep. Crook on the far side, out of the backfield. Stanley upended. Great work there. Yeah, I almost could have called that one there. I thought he'd go back to it because he's been good to him. Yep, they quickly call a timeout there after Zach Gray made the stop. You know, when they spread you out like that, they've got so much speed and quickness. They, they, they can get you six. Yeah, the idea is to spread you out and have blockers over there as mm -hmm. well and him get that little swing pass and have those blockers to kind of just navigate him some room to navigate out there in the open field. But one thing I was talking about earlier in this half, too, was that Baldwin County had to keep keep their head up and, and be mentally tough yep. and hang in this game because of the way that St. Paul's was running the ball, and they have... Been mentally tough. Yeah, they they turned it around the block field goal. They, that's exactly right. So that, that credit that Baldwin County defense too for a, a lot of what's going on right now. Three at the 20. Third and 11. Certainly, of course, two down territory here for Mix and his crew. Looking to the right side, pressure coming. Now he steps up. He's hit, still on his feet. Still trying, and they'll finally blow this one down. Now they'll take their last time out with fourth down coming. So this will be your ball game here for the Tigers. And yeah, St. Paul's just kind of squeezed that pocket yep. around him and didn't give him any space to run around. It looked, so like, it looked, like, he might, it looked like he might have some space, and his own center or guard was pushed back yep. to mm -hmm. him. You can see how he's tough to bring down. I mean, oh, man. he's 6'2", 210. Yeah, built all, good. All that good-looking athlete from, yep. the, from the waist down, too. Yep. So, what will the Tigers draw up here on fourth down? Do they just go right to the end zone? No, because suddenly you will. Because if, if you don't and you get it and you're in bounds, they're going to wind the clock quickly as soon as the change start mm -hmm. get moved and you're not going to have but maybe one maybe two more shots the problem with trying to do something like that has been that st paul's bringing a lot of heat and a lot of pressure right now they're not just sitting back they're coming after mix mm -hmm. making him make a decision right, right now exactly exactly 
There's Martavius Crook. He's got two touchdown receptions here tonight. Empty the backfield. Slant. Four up top, one to the bottom. Mims, the lone receiver at the bottom of the screen. Fires it out to the far side, complete. Now they're going to pitch it back off, trying to get to Williams. Spins, and he's going to be stopped short. Flea flicker. Wow. Failed. Executed pretty well, too. Executed well by the offense, but executed even better by the St. Paul's defense. What a play. What a finish. Yeah, they had the flea flicker call right there. Nice job to force it wide. Finish him off on the inbound. The Iowa commit stayed home and there made the stop. Reggie Bracey. What, what a ball game. What a game we were treated to here tonight. Oh. Feel for those Baldwin County kids where they battled back. Of course, this is a game much like St. Paul's was in last week when they had to come from behind to get that win over Park Crossing. They're, they're getting used to these crazy finishes. Well, I've heard about this defense, and tonight defense won the football game for St. Paul's, I would say. Jordan, Ingram, didn't, Jordan Ingram helped as well on the yeah. offensive side. The touchdowns. And That's a lot of people have played well in this game tonight. A lot of individuals that, you know, played a team game. A lot of that an offensive line had a very good evening. The red meat inside, right? And they were good. <laughs> St. Paul's hangs on for the win, 28-21. Steve Mask will go over, and this will be a hug to Nathan McDaniel. And, you know, that's some Daniel. Coach McDaniel told us in the pregame show, win, lose, or draw, his first call on Saturday morning is almost always from Steve Mask. And that's something. Yep. And... Great mutual respect there. And St. Paul's continues their winning streak in the first game of the region going all the way back to 2008. They get the win here tonight. And Baldwin County suffers their first <coughs> loss in the region. One and two on the year. St. Paul's now two and one and one and oh in the region. Great camaraderie by both teams. Yeah, just Congratulating each other and saying, hey, good sportsmanship, good game. We'll, we'll see you. We'll get you next year. Well played game. I mean, just not, not many penalties. Some hard hits. Yep. Clean and, uh, hits. A lot of, clean, a lot of uh, team tackling, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people flying for the ball. And a lot of fun. Baldwin yeah. County comes here, as you said, for the first time. And they battle with the... Saints, but St. Paul's gets the win, and let's talk to the victorious head coach, Amanda, is down on the field. Amanda. I am. I'm here with Coach Mass, and I know earlier, before the halftime, I asked you what that fuel of motivation was going to be that you were going to give to your boys. What was that? Well, we, we hung on and won. We need to go to the Red Cross tomorrow because we gave them CPR. <laughs> Whenever you give a good team CPR, that's what happens to you late in the game, and a lot of credit to Nate and his kids. They had a chance to fold late and didn't, and then we had a chance to put them away and didn't, and then all of a sudden, here we are, but we won. That's true. Both teams definitely played a great game. Now, I want to know, I know all games are important for you to win, but tonight was a regional game. How important was this game? Well, I man, uh, you know, you want to speak, you want the truth. Double it's a whole lot It's a whole lot better being 1-0 and 0-1. I can tell you that in the region, so we'll take that. And, uh, you know, it gives us a good start in the region. And, you know, it it, it, it was a big win. Make no quick mistake about it. If you're 0-1, you're, you're climbing the ladder a little bit the steeper you want it to be. Very true. Thank you so much, and hope you have a great night, Coach Mass. Congratulations. All right. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, He'll Coach Mask. He'll have a good night. Yeah. <laughs> He'll have a good night. He will. And uh, his team will as well as they get the win here tonight. They've now reeled off back-to-back -back wins after their uh, opening week loss to UMS. But, boy, how about the Baldwin County team? I mean, uh, I'm impressed by the St. Paul's team, but I'm really impressed by this Baldwin County team, what we saw in the resiliency. Because, like you said, it would have been easy to fold 28-14 on the yeah. road here. You just gave up four straight touchdowns. That wasn't the case. They don't stand on the sidelines staring at the scoreboard, right? No, they do not. They just keep playing. And, and man, they almost played their way back into a, a win, uh, possibly a tie into overtime. But uh, and, and even that final play, yep, it had a chance sure. if uh, St. Paul's was sleeping just a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, their quarterback, he's young. This will be some good experience for him. Some for their foundation to build on and, uh, you know, look for good things for Baldwin County for years to come. Yep. Indeed, there's your final score, 28-21. St. Paul's with the victory here. And look at our three players of the game nominations. And Jordan Ingram from St. Paul's with a huge night here tonight. He's going to be one of our players of the game you can vote on. And 
Also, Julian Little played great defensively for the Saints, and Anthony Mix, quarterback for the Baldwin County Tigers. And now, you go to what YouTube. exactly did he do? Yeah, <laughs> he dazzled us with the uh, throw of the season so far, that 60-yard <laughs> yeah. dime that he dropped <laughs> on there. Go to utb44.com to vote for your player of the game tonight, and then at halftime next week while we're out in theater, we will tell you who you selected. So that's going to do it here from E.E. E. Delaney Stadium. 28-21, St. Paul's gets the victory. They're 2-1. and one. Baldwin County falls 2 one and two on the year. Baldwin County is one and one in the region. St. Paul's one and zero oh in the region. So for Amanda Booz, doing a great job on the sideline. Jared Kihas in the truck and our entire UTB 44 crew here on Friday Night Rivals, including David Sharp, our statistician, Vic Lockett, Dan Brennan, and Jim Cox, who says good night here from Old Shell Road where St. Paul's hangs on and gets the victory over Baldwin County 28-21. And we'll see you next week in Theodore.